everything that I know Says I gotta go, tired of going solo But I'm never gonna go there again This is what it is, this is who I am This is where I'm finally taking my stand I didn't wanna fall, but I don't have to grow I'm not the one with two star hands Giving him the best of everything that's left of The life inside this man I've been born again Yeah, yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can tell we're full of fluid and ready to do it today yeah. Ooh, that's good. on the Fresh Black Coffee. We're even in uniform today, that's Dave. That's right, yeah. You, it, it's funny, Dave, you know, Dave ordered this one for me, and maybe it's because mine is in the 2X yeah. versus, what is yours, medium? 1X. 1X? Yeah. I don't know, the double, I guess they doubled the, the logo, but mine is... Twice the size of yours, if I, not I more. I think I changed, because when I order, they said, okay, how big you want that, uh, you know, iron, that transfer, yeah. the silk screen. Well, and we I need it I, large enough to match Eddie's ego. I'm sure yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah, said, yeah. right? Or match his nose or something, you know. Or, yeah. yeah, but anyway, so anyway. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, but at least <sighs> you can really see mine. I mean, when I walk through places, you know, people people really look. So, mm-hmm. hey, welcome, everyone. We were gone last week uh, taking care of business. Uh, Dave was in Minnesota. Two weddings in one weekend. Two weddings in one yeah, weekend. Got lots of nephews. That reminds me of a movie, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah. It was, uh, two weddings and a funeral, but uh, two weddings alone, huh? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we were just discussing some of the, some some humorous stuff, the language, <laughs> the, and how it has changed in the the acceptability of certain language. Yes. Uh, Spain won the Women's World Cup for yeah. the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, U.S. was booted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... It's funny, nobody really cared because Megan Rapino so badly uh, tarnished the name of uh, yeah. women's soccer in America. She destroyed the she sport destroyed, of soccer. She really did. She took the whole joy away. Here, here's the funny thing. I don't know if we talked. Did I, see, I always forget. See, I'm one of these guys that when I mention something, boom, it's gone. You know. Mm-hmm. So we may have talked about this, but the fact that the U.S. soccer team and even uh, American football teams, when they play overseas, like they, they play in London every year, you know. Yeah. And so England and Spain brought slaves to America, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. They were the original slavers. Pretty much. They were the shipping magnets. Right. But, yeah, we wouldn't have gotten here without mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're the ones who brought us. So U.S. plays England, or, or we play our games – so they play God Save the Queen. Mm-hmm. And stand for that. And the Americans stand for that. But all of a sudden, we play the national anthem mm-hmm. where we freed ourselves from England. And we're the ones who actually freed our slaves. Yeah. And so now, England, to be fair, also, they freed theirs mm-hmm. actually in 1806, a little before us. Mm-hmm. But we did free ours as well. Mm-hmm. And we never really, as a nation, uh, we... We forbade the importation of say I don't know if you knew this, but the U.S. actually, in uh, once we set the Declaration of Independence, mm-hmm. we also forbade the importation of slaves. Right at the same time. Well, yeah, and that was prior to the Civil War. Right, right, We're exactly at the same time. In fact, do you know how Oklahoma got our panhandle? It was because another regulation that says there will be no slavery north of this line and texas in order to become a state had to get rid of that top portion that went all the way to colorado and that's how it ended up becoming part of oklahoma and you know it's like what do we do with it this is why you watch yeah the coast guard you know how the coast guard was found Uh, uh, they were actually called the uh revenue um Revenue cruisers or the revenue something. I can't oh. remember. I can't remember. Oh, I knew it. Oh, because of tariffs and collecting tariffs. Well, right. And they would they would catch smugglers. It was okay. a, it was the smuggler right. catchers. Okay. And so, uh, and some of the early Coast Guard ships were actually run by black crews. Mm. And what they were catching were slavers trying to sneak slaves yeah. into America. Yeah. America, you could not bring slaves into or transport slaves out of America. And you know what? It was punishable by death. 
Oh, God. Yeah, it was capital punishment. Now, these are historical things you don't know about. But you know what? If you read this, y'all have sinned. There Maybe you, you will find that available on Amazon mm -hmm. and other book retailers. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, these are things that, and, but these idiots in the NFL, NBA, US, SL soccer leagues, mm -hmm. they don't take time. Megan Rapino, she's an idiot. Yeah. It, Good riddance to you, Megan. Your soccer is better for you being gone. Yeah, except I don't know how long it'll take to recover. And I'm going to go back to the 80s. The great NFL star, Kyle Rode, his son gave up scholarships and everything. Yeah, Kyle Rode Jr. to go play soccer. SMU. He, he went to SMU. Yeah. Right. And all the people who poured millions of dollars in their careers into trying to develop soccer as a sport to catch on the United States. And then to see someone like this. Yeah, I think I think it'll recover. And I think now it once they get rid of Megan and anybody like her from I, I think USWSL, the US Women's Soccer League, once she's gone, I think it will recover now. Now I think we can unless she has poisoned others to carry on, but I don't think so. I think enough. And Carly Lloyd, you know who Carly Lloyd is? No, I've heard the name. Yeah, she was one of the stars before she retired right. after the that's last, right. right, where the last, we won the yeah, last. Yeah, that's right. Right, world championship. And Carly Lloyd quit because of Megan Rapino and some of the shenanigans that were going on. She said, I'm done with that. In fact, when they were kneeling, they had a whole, and she stood proudly for the, and, yeah. and, you know, they, they gave her fits because mm -hmm. she refused. She she didn't show team spirit yeah. because she refused to yeah. kneel. Yeah. And uh, they were trying, the media was trying to give her grief. Yeah. But she was one of the stars. She was like mm -hmm. the, the top player, you know. So we need more Carly Lloyds now. The, mm -hmm. where they, What they tried to do, here's what's funny, though. Um I think it was NBC. Was it ABC or NBC who was carrying the games? Uh, uh, I think it was ABC. Whoever was try whoever was carrying the games, they had Carly Lloyd as one of the commentators between the at halftime and before and after. You know, mm -hmm. so she was one of the. They had Carly Lloyd because they. I think finally it's sinking in to the media. Mm. We. We're killing ourselves. What goes woke goes broke. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so they, they they employed Carly Lloyd, and I think these teams are starting to get the but, – but anyway, what, what, if, without going too far on that, what, what caused me to do this, Spain won the World Cup. Yeah. Okay. Hats off. Unbelievable. All of it, the top team, England, Holland, uh, Spain, they eliminated a lot of the top teams. France got eliminated. Some of the most – they call soccer the beautiful game. Mm -hmm. This, I have to tell you, everybody, was some of the most beautiful soccer. These women know how to play the game. I was blown away. I, I'm almost getting goosebumps watching mm -hmm. it. If you understand soccer, you know what I'm talking about. The passing, the movement, the kicks, the scores. Uh, I love it when they show in slow motion these goals and the these goalkeepers, these women. Mm -hmm. Fly, you can get that, Dave, by the way. Is uh, that on my app? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, the goalkeeper flying through the air, either making saves or, or, or the ball missing their hand and going into the goal. But, I mean, some of these women kicking the ball from 30, 40 yards, Dave, yeah. into the corner. I mean, it just who, who Somebody recently had a corner kick that they scored a goal. Because you can put a spin on that ball. And right. Oh, yeah. It hooks and comes around. But I right. think that was a guy's game, wasn't it? There well, was recently. Oh, I'm sure it was a lot of guys' games. They do it all the time. And and what it is, it's, it's a strategy of the guys when they line up to block the keeper from getting back in time to stop. I mean, there's so many different things. But, but to see these women, the level of women's sport mm -hmm. has risen so far, it's just unbelievable how good they are. Now, having said that, it's such a beautiful game when you see it played women against women. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you try to equate that to the man's game, oh, God, yeah. 
it's a difference in speed and power. Mm-hmm. The guys play the same game only one and a half to two times as fast mm-hmm. and as hard. And as powerful, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so it, it's the, the women's game to me is in some ways almost prettier to watch. Mm-hmm. But one of the reasons it's prettier to watch because it's at a slower speed. Mm-hmm. The guys do it so fast sometimes you, you, you can't really appreciate how good it is. And the the ones who started this that I saw was the Argentinian, the South Americans, mm-hmm. the intricate, like uh, the Europeans like used to like to play this long ball. Mm-hmm. The Argentinians per, uh, affected the short game, the quick the, pass, lots of quick pass, right, yeah. and and intricate, like mm-hmm. between. I mean, you'd have two guys, you know, three feet mm-hmm. apart, and put it right between them and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and and I hope you'll indulge. I know a lot of you aren't soccer fans, but maybe this will help you understand why people who love soccer love soccer. They appreciate the art of it. So anyway, and unless you really understand the skill level of putting a ball that's this big, about three quarters the size of a basketball with your feet into a space, maybe this big, between people oh, yeah. with the guy running, let's say, uh, you know, a 40 yard dash yeah. and the guy picks it up on the run, can lift it in the air and then kick it another 30 yards into the corner of a goal. I mean, these are the things or have a goalkeeper stop it at that speed. These are the things that make soccer yeah soccer and so people people are always talking about oh soccer is such a boring dull game how can you do it you know how can you watch a game sit there for an hour and a half two hours and have a one one or one zero game and that have you ever seen a baseball game you know Oh yeah, baseball is boring as can be. Oh, uh, but, because but, it's too slow. Well, yeah, but and then you'll still have a, a one nothing game. Yeah, a two to one game. Right. You yeah. know the Orioles just beat the Yankees one nothing or lost two to one or something after thirteen innings, fourteen right. innings. You know they have a one one, and all of a sudden somebody wins after fourteen innings a two to one game, and and people go, oh what a game, what a wonderful mm-hmm. game, you know. I mean, are you kidding me? You show that to a to a European, <laughs> they think you're nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I showed football when I was overseas in Germany. I would get these videos and show football to the Germans, and, and they thought it was just dull as all get out because most of the time was the guys laying on the ground, getting up, walking back, and standing in a huddle. Mm-hmm. You know, now if you cut out all of the time where they're in the huddle. They're on the ground. Mm-hmm. In between, if you took just line up, hut, and the plays, yeah, you know, you would cut uh, a four-hour game down. Twenty minutes, maybe. into well, no, because it's, it's fifteen minutes of actual play time. So you would actually have an hour game. Well, well, well that's true. Even the huddle times it running in. Exactly. That's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just think about how much actual play. Mm-hmm. On the field action there is in a football game. Not yeah. that much. But it's our mind, the way we think of it, when there's action, there's action. But there's not always scoring. No, there's not. And it, to the person who says, oh, the soccer, it just kind of goes on and on and on and on. You know, hockey does too. Yeah. You know, and at least northern United States is all about hockey. Yeah. I grew up all about hockey. And the gameplay is essentially very similar. Yeah. You know, they, oh, to yeah, to soccer, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's just on ice. A lot of the, the pro- same rules. Yep, offsides. Offside. You know all that stuff. Yep, yep. You know. And and uh, yeah, and it's 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 like indoor. You know, icing. Mm-hmm. Icing is like the three line rule yeah. in soccer. Mm-hmm. Indoor soccer, if you mm-hmm. kick it past three lines mm-hmm. without touching somebody, then yeah. it goes back. You know, it's some similar rules, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's funny. But anyway. Uh, oh, what made me think about it, other yeah. than congratulations to Spain and talking yeah. about the beautiful game. We're uh, back. <laughs> yeah. They are now, they made a big deal about w- in the medal ceremony, the head of the Spanish Federation 
kissed one of the girls. I don't know if you heard about this. No. Okay, when they, you know they go through and they hang medals around, sure. and in Europeans they tend to. Oh, it's, you know, yeah, very Eastern European. Right. Well, somehow this guy he kissed the one girl on the lips. I don't know why or how or whatever. They both turned head the same direction. Well, maybe, maybe I don't. Know. But but in my wife, I didn't even remember this. One of the girls jumped up and wrapped her legs around the guy when he, you know, and was hugging him and 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 wrapped her legs around the guy. They didn't fire her, mm-hmm. but they they. They actually now are kicking him off. He's the president of the uh, Spanish Soccer Federation. It's always the guy's the whole, fault, Eddie. I know. I, <laughs> it is. It, sadly, I mean, and the girl, nobody said anything, but somebody, I'm sure probably in America, mm-hmm. saw it, was offended. Mm-hmm. Oh, male chauvinist pig that he <laughs> she was. She wrapped her arms and legs around him, but it's his fault. Well, no, it wasn't the same girl. <laughs> I know, but diff- oh, well, it's yeah. just... But this guy kissed this girl. Well, I didn't see her object or anything. Yes. I mean, usually if a girl... If, if I went in to kiss some strange girl, she'd probably... Or... No, thank you. Or some kind of way. But I didn't see any... I mean, I didn't even notice it. I mean, you know, it happened and you move on. You get the medal and moved on. It went through the whole deal. I didn't even realize it. I watched the whole deal. But all of a sudden, this we're talking a week later, and it's, it's a national... Oh, listen, even for ogling, Brett Musburger got fired after decades because he said, wow, that's the quarterback's girlfriend. She's very beautiful. Yeah. And he gets fired for that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And you know what? She was flattered. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. <laughs> it's always somebody else's business. It, it's these these busy bodies. You know? Yes. It, it 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 reminds me, it takes me back to Isaiah three, you know, women and children shall rule them. Mm-hmm. And it, when when Isaiah was prophesying against the downfall of Israel, he said, Your women and children shall rule you. I hate to say it. But that's where we are. Women and children shall rule you, and that's where we are now. And it's not just any women. It's it's some other women. It, it's like somebody who's not even involved. And so they put pressure on this girl now to make a big – now all of a sudden she's offended. She wasn't offended, but a, a week later after – Everybody, oh, you need to be offended. You should, how, how dare you? Because if she wasn't, now something's wrong with her. Right. And, you know, it, it's, it's just it's but sad. But a society who gets bound up by that and owned by it. Yeah. I mean, they lost their man card. They have. Yeah. You know, that will not fly in Russia, China, or Absolutely. in the Eastern yeah. world. This is why the Western world... It, 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 it's just falling apart. Yeah. This is why we we are on the precipice of, of doom. Yeah. The entire, it's not just the U.S., it's the yeah. Western world, and the U.S. is leading the way, and the way we're leading the way is like this, with our heads, yeah. you know, into the noose or into the guillotine. We're, mm-hmm. we're just doing it, and, and we don't have men. Our, uh, we got these men that have given up their man card and are yielding to these... <laughs> To the the women and and the uh, fake men. Yeah, I mean, I mean the men who are no longer men. And I, I say that I say that without a bit of hesitation. <laughs> Look, I mean, uh, someone like Rosie O'Donnell could attack personally Donald Trump, and he calls her a pig, and you know, even Megyn Kelly gets all freaked out like how terrible of a man he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's so crazy that, yeah, and, and they can attack Donald Trump all day long. That's the thing. Say everything they want. Yeah. It's no biggie. But yeah. You but, fight back. But, but, but yeah, yeah, you say anything. Oh, it takes me back to, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the, the running back at OU. It, this, this one really got, there, there are two cases. They're very close to each other. Uh, one was the OU running back. Uh, Anderson. No, the one that's up in, um, in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's the he's the running back at Cincinnati. Mixon? Yeah. Mixon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mixon, where he punched the girl. Yeah. Okay. She calls him 
a nigger. Yes, yeah, she attacked him. She attacked him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, I think she hit him even. Right. Right. And he reacted and punched her. Absolutely. He. They want him thrown, not just suspended or punished. They want him out of football, and he sued. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing happens to the girl. But the same girl, these same women are supposed to be equal to men. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. Right. What is it? Are they equal or are they to be protected? Right. You cannot protect what's equal. Yeah. But Anderson, it was even worse than a suspension. He got indicted for rape. For a girl who's chasing him around from bar to bar, sleeps with him, and the next morning says, look, I'm not looking for a long-term relationship. You threw yourself on me. <laughs> then she cries rape. Which one is Anderson? Oh, he was the, at Georgia? I don't, he's was at OU. It was, oh, just, right, it was right. back oh. about four years oh, ago I don't at know OU. And Ruined his finally, career. her text messages, because other girls who she said, this gives me a ticket now into the liberal media. Because I'm going to take down a star football player. Uh And, you know, he got totally exonerated. All the charges dropped once the narrative got out. Right. And that, but nothing happened to her. Oh, no. This is the problem. Whatever you would railroad a guy in maliciously, you ought to serve that sentence. But see, and here's what's also not fair Jameis Winston. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jameis Winston. He, I believe, truly did rape a girl. Okay. Okay. But he was the star Heisman Trophy winner, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. He, he gets away with, he gets off. Mm-hmm. Okay. This poor girl, you know, that I believe was a legitimate case. Yeah. Okay. The following year, they have a new quarterback. He's in a bar one night. This girl comes up, calls him the N word mm-hmm. throws a drink in his face mm-hmm. or uh, may, may have slapped him. And he quickly reacts and punches her. Mm-hmm. Well, he's assaulted it's battery at that point because he was, because of what happened the year before with Jameis Winston, uh, he's finished. You never heard from him again. Was he, he, he was one of the top quarterbacks in the well, country. He would have been, had a future, was oh, he black as yeah, well? Well, yes. He was? He was. See, I thought if he was white, they'd probably be, still have him in prison, you know. <laughs> well, but... But, yeah, that's the knee-jerk yeah, reaction. Right. So, to cover themselves, because they got in trouble over Jameis. Right. It, but they got away with it. It's like a ref who ma- does a makeup call for the one they missed. <laughs> exactly. So now they decide to over punish this yeah. guy. They kicked him totally out of school. Oh, everything. Yeah. The kids in, in no other school would touch him. Mm-hmm. And and there was no rape, no assault. And they had the video. I watched the video several times. He's sitting in the girl's there, and she is next to him, and she comes up and starts. Mm-hmm. This thing, he's looking at her, and she pushes and takes him and throws a drink, and he and he goes mm-hmm. like this, mm-hmm. and then it's all over. His entire future career is over, I, and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? So he does that in one simple spur of the moment mm-hmm. instance. Mm-hmm. His career is over. James Winston mm-hmm. gets away with what I believe was, yeah, truly rape. Of course, you know, he now had the money because the trial wasn't until after he was recruited or drafted into the NFL. He was able probably, I don't know, you know, I'm not sure exactly Mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah, (laughs) This is speculation, of course, on my part. I don't know. Well, do you like journalists say, some would say. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) some, yeah, some would say, uh... (laughs) That uh, he got away with it, and uh, this other poor guy, his career's ruined. So uh, what I'm saying is, I want to be fair. Mm-hmm. If if I see a guy hit a girl and beat a girl mm-hmm. unnecessarily, mm-hmm. then yes, throw the book at him. And that goes for everybody. But, you don't go beyond neutralizing a threat. Exactly. Neutralize the threat. And uh, at the same time, young women 
don't attack six foot three to four, 200 something pound guys by throwing alcohol in their eyes, Mm -hmm. punching them, slapping them, scratching them or anything Mm -hmm. of the nature because human nature, they may react. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think James Winston or this guy necessarily would normally have attacked a girl had they just tried to push. But when you slap a guy, a person at a bar, especially sometime an instinct, you know what I'm saying? Sure. It, it just happens. Well, I yeah. did it. When I was in the eighth grade, a girl started attacking me and she hit me three times. Once in, I had a stick mm-hmm. with knots on it. First time in the leg. Next time in the arm, and I told her three to do not hit me again. Stop, stop. And kept getting out. Finally, the last time she hit me in the face and mm-hmm. s- scratched me across my face, and that was the thing. I punched her. Sure. And that, as you said, neutralized the yeah, Absolutely. After that, it was over. Yeah. She no longer hit me with the stick. Yeah. What was I supposed to do? Stand there. Stop, stop. Yeah. You know, and let her just beat me to, a, to shreds with a stick. I mean... To do that to young men is not a gentlemanly thing to do. At some point, right. someone has to tell the and this girl was a bully anyway. She was she was bigger than me too, by the way. But but anyway, at some point, someone has to teach these women the rules. You cannot. You cannot. This, this is what honestly, Dave. This is what makes yeah. me mad. You cannot teach women you're equal to men yeah. and then turn around and say, but but they're women. That, exactly. It just confuses everybody. Exactly. Yeah. It confuses everybody. Uh, listen, it, it's never been fair. You and I both, I remember when you were, and Pat Campbell were going at it about a Muskogee cop shooting a guy five times in the back, in the back as he's fleeing. And the cop never even got indicted, much less convicted. Yeah, yeah, that's another. Don't don't get me on that it, one. Yeah, yeah. right. No, but yeah. I, I'm just going to show yeah. the irrationalness. And if we're going to treat everybody equally, that includes women and includes cops. No, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, like I told you earlier, <laughs> you and I, we have our differences, <laughs> but deep down, I think we we sing from the same hymnal. The crazy thing is, on that case. You and I were in the minority on that. Oh, yeah. Most everybody's, if you just obeyed the cop, you'd still be alive. Right. Right. You know, I mean, Jefferson says you've got a duty not to obey an unconstitutional order. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was an un- that was not an unconstitutional order. I understand to, that. But, but, there, but are, there are some orders you don't comply with. Right. But, but the, you know... The thing, you know, we talk about, we call police heroes. A hero goes above and beyond mm-hmm. to, to protect and to serve. Right. That was not protecting and serving. No. There was no need to go chasing or to shoot this guy fleeing. Yeah. They could have, he, everybody knew who he was. Send a warrant out for this guy. You found the gun on him. You knew what it they was. They didn't find a gun he, on him. He just didn't comply with the well, search, remember? Well, no, no, no. After well, his death, they found it. Well, actually, and see, when you look at the video, actually, yeah, they they said he was reaching for a gun. But when I looked at the video. He dropped his cell phone. Dropped his cell phone. The gun was still in the waistband. Uh, well, what happened, the, uh, no, uh, no, well, see, now you got me. We're talking about the women. <laughs> Save it for another day. Okay. Okay. (laughs) All I want to take away from that is that needs to apply to cops and women. Yes. Women. (laughs) Women. Be thankful that God made you women. Yeah. Men, be thankful God made you men. Women, you have enough power. You have power over men, and it's not by being men. And uh, the other thing then is that the, the money thing. They 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 brought it up again during this the the difference in the finances um, the United States Canada and England I think have made this agreement to where they equally share in the uh, the revenue of the men's uh, 
what what comes in through the World Cup mm-hmm. and everything like that. And so now the men, when they if and when they go to the World Cup, they have to share equally the money they get with the women, even though it's ten times as much as the women get from their yeah. yeah. And 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 that's supposed to be fair. Think and equal. of it. Okay, does the punter get the same contract as the quarterback? Exactly. <laughs> even even though even though even though the punter is on a team that sucks. Or or does a team or does a team that finishes last do they get the same amount of yeah. money as the team that exactly. makes it to the Super Bowl? Because what Super motivates Bowl? great performance, which is what we celebrate, is effort, it is skill, it is discipline, it is refining your craft, and you've got to reward that. This brings us it's a perfect segue, huh? segue <laughs> into the NIL. Okay. N- uh, name, image, like Name, image. In- Name, name, image, likeness, right? Which is something uh, which is near and dear to all of us. Has mm-hmm. been for probably twenty years in my case. Um, they're working on it. Uh, the Congress has now gotten involved, which is absolutely the worst thing that could happen. And the only reason is because they don't know how else to fix it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it, it's greed. You know, you know why? It's because mm-hmm. agents, mm-hmm. agents, agents are involved, mm-hmm. and 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 agents are greedy. They don't want to get lawyers. Lawyers, uh, they just don't want to give up their little piece of the pie, and they're going to mess around and make it to the point where they don't get right. any pie. And that's it. money talks. It's, why do you think it took us so long to get to a college football playoff? Because the bowls were making bukus of money. Yeah. And they don't want to be left out. Yeah. See, to me, um, I have mixed emotions. But uh, I, I think I've told the story about here in town, mm-hmm. uh, Tim Gill and Rocky. Yeah. Uh, Kalmus, yeah. No, Rocky no. Kalmus was the football player. That's right, he was right. Rocky something else. But anyway, it, w- it was just um, – it was just a shame the way it worked because they uh, eventually the, the and it was the news media in Tulsa the Tulsa World yep. Channel two four and uh, nine twenty three no two six and yeah. and see I'll throw radio and newspaper in well, this yeah too. all of them yeah, yeah the entire media lambasted these kids because they wanted to leave ORU and and go to Arkansas and Southern Illinois for better contracts. Mm-hmm. Or not contracts, but but better opportunities to get drafted mm-hmm. from ORU, mm-hmm. and uh, the media just said, "Oh, they're ungrateful. They should mm-hmm. uh, honor their word, honor their contract." Da la la la. And so finally, Nolan Richardson, who was coaching at uh, Arkansas, still mm-hmm. finally told them, "Look," he said, "You guys are just getting killed over there. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to sit out a year. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna let you go, Bill Self and." Uh, mm-hmm. Richard Roberts and or you are not going to let you go. The best thing you can do is just go back. Mm-hmm. So they did. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, mm-hmm. Bill Self mm-hmm. goes to TU mm-hmm. to better his opportunity. To better his opportunity, <laughs> yeah. he got a million dollar contract. I think or you got a two million dollars out of it to pay for the uh city plex over here they anyway they got two million dollar buyout of his yeah you contract. have to buy out their current they contract. bought out his contract and bill self got bought out i mean he got a new contract mm-hmm. which was lucrative <clears throat> and you see where he is now at kansas i i listen i don't begrudge bill self he did the best for him what I felt bad is that he was one of the ones that didn't want to let the kids go. Oh, he was brutal on them. Yeah. The and penance they had to pay. Exactly. And then he goes two weeks. And, and you know he was in negotiation already yeah. at that time mm-hmm. when he was doing that to them. Right. He should not have done that. He should not, knowing that he's leaving. And then now he, from there he goes to Kansas, wins the national championship. He's this big guy. It, it, yeah, there, I don't know. It, but anyway, I predict I wrote a letter to the world. And mm-hmm. This was in 1990, I think it was 1998, 97, 98. 
might have been 97. We're talking in the 90s, but I wrote a letter to the Tulsa World that the day was coming when the student athlete would get paid. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be moaning and groaning. Mm -hmm. And I said, although I am against it, I will have to be on their side because and the name of the name of my article or my op ed for the Tulsa World, and they printed it actually, mm -hmm. but the the name of it was the student athlete, the last slave class in America. Yep. Yep. Because they were the only ones that were bound by these NCAA rules, while the coaches were like or the schools were like the masters and the, the, the coaches were like the slave man. It, it was worse than that, Eddie. Because a slave, his master could decide to be generous and give him some money. But the NCAA would punish that, that master and make it against the law. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It was even coach, worse. That's right. For coach, yeah, because there are coaches who who got in trouble. Who was it? There was oh. a story about a coach who helped a kid whose mother was having surgery and they helped him get a bus ticket home. Oh, or it something. happened at Jinx High School with uh, David Alexander. The kid, it had no heat on and the kid was sick for three weeks. A freshman. And David gets in trouble because he goes, turns the heat on and pays that mother. And I know this because the job I used to do for Alexander Constru Eagle's Nest, mm -hmm. he had her do it for less than what he was paying me. You know, so this was not recruiting. Right. But so it happens even at that level. But let me go on. Barry Switzer said, it's sad. I got guys who don't even have quarters to put in the laundry machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'd like to give them some kind of stipend. Oh, yeah. But he would get in trouble for that. He couldn't even let him use his wife's wash machine. <laughs> That's considered recruiting, see. you know? Yeah, it was messed up. I mean, it was messed up. Someone had to come up with a way. They finally, now they did come up with a thing where the kids were able to get enough money to be able to take care of personal needs during the season, mm -hmm. okay? But, you know, beyond that. But anyway, so I came up with my way getting back to the NIL mm -hmm. because they do need to resolve this deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and there's a better so here here's my solution, okay. What is it? Uh go back to the old transfer rules. Because part of the problem right now, to me, it's not as much the 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 pay pay rules, okay, mm -hmm. the kids making the money. The big thing is this NIL transfer window. The portal. The portal. It's as free they call agency. It. Right. It, it's it's out of hand. I it mean is. there's no control. Okay, yeah. so they need to go back to the old transfer rules where, in fact, even even closing more, uh, if you sign a, a deal, you're locked in. If you sign to OU, you go to OU and you stay at OU. Well, let's clarify that because you're not required to play for that team, if, but but you should at least not be eligible for another team. Because if, well, right. you, if you, uh, you could stay, well, yeah, you can transfer to school, but you can't play football. Because, I mean, you were at Tech, right, right, on a scholarship. If you're injured and can't play the rest of the time, you still get your scholarship by law. Oh, yeah. Now, they pressure you to try to release that. Right. You right. Know? right. But, uh, yeah, I had a friend that happened to SMU. He became mm -hmm. a rich lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and he only played one semester. He broke. Yeah. It. He tore his shoulder, and he broke. right, yeah. right. So it would be slavery if they made you right, right? play but, right, right. But but I I like your idea of no, you're capped right now. Your four years of eligibility are, are with this school unless the school releases. Much like uh, was it Barry Switzer did with Troy Aikman? He says, "Look, we're going to stick with the wishbone. Given your skills." You should look, and I think UCLA is looking, and they released him to UCLA. And Troy became the number one draft pick because of that. Well, yeah, if a school releases you yeah. or or your coach gets fired. Oh, now that's an interesting twist. Right, right. If your coach gets fired, the one who signed you and brought you in and a, a new coach comes in, we're doing something new, yeah. and, and they're going to... I think that's a game changer. It's only fair. Right, so these are things that change the contract. Mm -hmm. But the original, you know, Eddie Huff signed me. I came to play for Eddie Huff, according to these groups. These are that. Boom. Now you're here for four years. Yeah. That's the deal. 
Yeah. Okay. And and so that that's the rule one. You can't change every year and go to this school and we're bidding and we're in You're right. Da, 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 da. And, and that's the other thing that the tie of the two of them is. Uh, and it happened last year. North Carolina's quarterback said, "I was offered a guaranteed NIL of fifteen million if I switched." You see what this turned into? Yeah, it's no salary caps and total free agency. Oh, yeah, it's, now. it's bigger than the NFL. Yeah, I mean <laughs> NFL, they they put a cap on on the, yeah. on the draft choices exactly. now. You know, and, uh, yeah, yeah. To uh, the NIL now. Uh, must be shared among the team and not the individual. Is now that's the legislation proposed? No, that's what I'm proposing. Oh, okay, that's your proposal. Yeah, because <clears throat> okay, let's say Caleb Williams. Mm. Okay, Caleb Williams at, at USC, he may be getting five million dollars a year to play quarterback. Mm. I mean, he he is probably making more money at USC. Then he may be making in the NFL. Well, yeah. Let's put it different. He's probably making more money at USC than a third of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. But how about this, Eddie? Well, well let me finish yeah, my, okay. my my deal. Yeah, make okay. It cool. yeah. All right. So, so my deal is this: Why should Caleb Williams be getting $5 million a year. I don't know what that the number is, okay? Why should he get $5 million a year? Your son mm-hmm. is sitting there, the guard or tackle, mm-hmm. blocking for him. Yeah. Injuring his knee, maybe Same. have a career-ending injury. Yeah. Working just as hard every day, doing have to go to sa- same classes, study probably oh, yeah. as harder, harder. Who will never have the opportunity to sign a forty million dollar, a five hundred million dollar Pat Mahomes deal yeah. uh, in the NFL? Yeah, and Caleb's already get five million. How is that fair? Yeah, it's not. So what I'm saying during college, if someone wants to keep Caleb Williams there, and and wants then you pony up ten million dollars. For the whole team and then share it among the team or 20 minutes, you know, get enough people together to make your team maybe, you know, USC, Duke. uh, And then I think it also helps. It it makes the competition among schools still uh, active, but it gets it more involved team wise. Okay, here's my solution. So what do you know? I mean, what do you think about that? I th- I think it has very good merit. I think it has very good reasons for it. But I wouldn't go 100% that way. I think whatever you get in NIL, let's say half of it goes in the kit, common cup that everybody gets an equal share from. I think you ought to have some personal initiative reward because I don't think the punter should get what the quarterback gets. I do. Here, here's how. Okay, I, I'm not totally finished. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So, I think everything goes into the kitty, the nil money. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Now, the way you do what 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 you just said, part of that money goes to a retirement fund. Oh no, that's interesting. Insurance and 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 a, a what do you call it? an annuity? Says the insurance man. <laughs> And, Sorry, I'm teasing. Well, no, and then well, and then because I'm thinking long term. Yeah, which annuity, these kids aren't right for the for these guys, and and that like a lot of things that you cannot collect until age forty. Yeah. Okay, now then, where the individual money comes from is royalties on merchandise. You oh, kind of split it now. Yeah, see, you forget. That it used to be, this is what was so terrible. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Billy Sims. When he played, okay, every Billy Sims shirt that sold, oh, you kept the money. Exactly. No. If it has Billy Sims, if Billy Sims is the one that's bringing in the money for that number, what was he, 20? 20, 24, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Billy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Billy. <laughs> whatever number he was. If that was Billy Sims' number, Billy needs to get that money. Mm-hmm. So so that's what I'm saying. So that's where Caleb Williams makes his money. 
that's where Billy, uh, you know. Who, I, I kind of like that because I think there is a, uh, it's a hybrid. It's exactly. A, yeah. So NIL money goes to the team and it's split among everybody. And see, that's what Texas Tech has kind of done. You had a bunch of people put together. Last year it was 200000 This year it's probably going to be maybe $500,000. But that's split among every player. So from the kickoff return guy, the punter, the you, if you're sitting on the bench, if you're contributing and risking your neck at practice every day, mm -hmm. you get the same piece of pie mm -hmm. because you're working just as hard yep. as everybody else. If you're not, you get cut. Mm -hmm. But everybody that's on that team gets a cut of that two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars. Nobody's starving on a team. Yeah. But now, if you got, if you're the stud. The quarterback, the this, the this, the this. Yeah. If you're the Pat Mahomes of that team, mm -hmm. and that number five jersey is flying out of the bookstore, mm -hmm. then you get a royalty. You know, every you get if it's a, a, a forty dollar shirt, mm -hmm. you're getting ten bucks for every shirt yep. that's flying out of that store. So you know, you sell you know a thousand shirts. That's ten thousand, a hundred thousand mm -hmm. shirts. You know, you get ten. Uh, what? Uh, right. Hundred thousand. A hundred thousand dollars. Sure. But that, very few people are buying the punter's jersey. Well, right. Yeah. But that's what that's what and the punter doesn't deserve as much right. as the other guy. Right. But and he's so getting, that's the individual part that that's you, the individual. you retain. But the rest of it and here's the reason I, I when you started talking about the long term looking for benefits, uh, disability, right, insurance kind of things. One of the top the, well, the top football player out of Oklahoma high schools in 2000 was 10 was Jake Alexander, son of David. Oh, it, David had a pro bowl career with the Eagles, you know, as a center. Well, I remember over at Todd's house one day, I said, how's Jake coming in practice? And, uh, Todd's wife says, he's done. He blew his knee out and it's career ending. And I, a few years later, Jake has me doing some work on his house. I said, so how's your knee? He says, it hurts every day, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to make a living right now in sports medicine. But, you know, yeah, it'd be nice to have something. Because I, I asked his dad, I it's, well, so you were Randall Cunningham center. Yeah. I said, so, you know, did you finally get waived or what? He says, no, I walked away. I said, Why? He says, after my second knee surgery, I still wanted to be able to walk with and play ball with my kids. Mm -hmm. And that's those are real issues. Oh, That's definitely. why I love the fact that you brought that up. Because the pro players, they will get insurance policies and stuff to deal with that. But the college kids don't. No, they're covered for on the you know school injury so if, if it game or practice yeah they're covered the disability part though but no right right none right long term right exactly no that's the thing and so what needs to be set up is to have them <clears throat> have a fund uh and you know like i said set up this annuity for each individual player yeah that down the road and they can't touch it until a certain age or if they're considered, mm -hmm. you know, what, what they call this, um, this head trauma thing that everybody. Yeah, concussion protocols. Right, stuff, yeah. that, that kind of stuff if all so, of a sudden. But, but these are the things. I mean, to me, it's not rocket science, the things you can do. You can, you can reward these studs by name, image, and likeness on their jersey. But don't let them have individual contracts because at that point to me it's unfair to the mom and dad and and young man and woman mm -hmm. who who whose whose kids the mother and father who drive uh, let, let's take do you know this real pretty blonde girl i can't think of her name at LSU she she's a gymnast mm. and and she's just Everywhere she goes, she's got this. They've got this um, cadre of young boys that follow her. Mm. In fact, I went to Dallas. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I went to Dallas, and and uh, I have some nephews, two nephews. Mm. Uh, one's a sophomore in high school, and and one's like in the eighth mm. grade. Okay, and I couldn't think of the girl's name, and they said, "Oh, 
<laughs> instantly knew the girl's name. I mean, these kids all know who this is. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's kind of a so-so gymnast. Mm -hmm. But everybody you know, wants to see her because she's this beautiful girl. She has one of the highest NIL contracts in sports. Exactly. They learn the business side of it. Exactly. Yep. And there's another one. There two girls, they were at one of the San Diego State or some California school, mm -hmm. and they transferred to Florida or Florida State mm -hmm. and and got this big multi-million dollar contract. No, that's a big issue in women's college sports today. Well, I mean, look, there are some female golfers that have, you know, they've gotten their publicists and they're doing photo spreads that I didn't watch them, honey. I, I didn't look at those, <laughs> you know, and tennis players. Kovic, was it? Was that her name? Yeah. Anna she wasn't Kornisha. that good. She wasn't that great of a tennis no. player. But boy, you could always find her photos everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, they, they understand. I mean, listen, Peyton Manning made more money on commercials than he did throwing the football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, but I don't think that happened until he got into because I, it, when he was playing, it wasn't allowed yet. But it's he the business today. size took, of it. Now, his son. Uh, not his son, his nephew, yeah. Uh, Arch. Yeah. Arch Manny. But, but see, that's what I'm saying. This girl or, or these girl gymnasts, mm -hmm. or golfers, whoever, whatever they are, mm -hmm. tennis players, that money needs to be spread among all the girls. I mean, do you know the number, probably the number one injury uh, uh, um, sports is gymnastics? Oh, yeah. Oh, you go to the ER. Oh, God, yeah. On a, on a, on yeah. a, after a gym meet. Yeah, they are pushing the envelope. Oh, I mean, the ankles, the yeah. knees, uh, these yeah. young girls. I remember when my son was uh, playing soccer, and uh, we went in one day, and it, the guy they told us it was unbelievable. No, like, that's the, the, the girls' soccer. Down you, the bottom floor of the MAC, there is where the sports men. Well, no, this playing. was way back before, oh, before they Before that, right? Yeah, this you was, helped build it, but your yeah, son didn't yeah, get to use it. Yeah, this was back at uh, St. Francis. Okay, yeah. And they were telling us, oh, the worst was the girls yeah. coming in, uh, tearing, especially knees. Yes. Girls tear the knee. Because for some, at, the, at least in those days, girls' knees weren't as strong mm -hmm. as, as boys, and they were tearing their knees like crazy. I was, Listen, I was I, watching a homeschool varsity girls basketball team one day. I think Metro was playing Noah. And so you got 10 girls out there on the court. Yeah, you got 20 knees, and I counted 13 knee braces. Yeah. 13 at the beginning of the season yeah 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 you know, yeah it's it's that serious yeah no so that's what i'm saying so you really need to uh anyway well, we, mean, don't wanna, we don't want to we don't want to let me just have one long. more thing just to drive your home your point home was it ohio state the quarterback last year skipped the bowl game because he was going into the draft no and no it, he played the ohio well, state okay there was somebody else there was the quarterback and they were one of the top 10 teams didn't play and they tarred and feathered the guy for it but eddie if it were me i would not risk the yeah draft that's more and more starters are not playing because right. you got to show yourself in the combine too yeah. right you got a test coming right up. that's what they're all doing yeah see and, and their agents are telling him mm -hmm. and, and and probably i would i would imagine whatever teams that are looking at them Absolutely. are telling him don't have them playing exactly. this because we want them right yeah so because you know what they don't get a dime from that bowl game proceeds not a dime their school will next year yes but not them yeah you're right you're yeah. right yeah so yeah it, it, exactly so it, everything's become about money and and the kids okay. have finally gotten smart and they finally okay here's realized. a segue then all right iowa state just kicked some players off for gambling Ironic. Where does the money come from that these conferences sign these TV deals from? One of the number one advertisers now growing more and more is sports betting. So these universities are making tens of millions now every year for money that sports betting is generating in TV deals. Yeah, commercials. yeah but hypocrisy in sports is so, pretty bad. So you're putting on a football game to sell to the TV stations 
so they can go get ad revenue from the gambling industry. And yet, if any of your kids, God forbid, gamble, you kick them out. But here's another strange thing, too, though. Um, uh, the, the, the contracts, see, the, the athletic programs at most of these schools are separate from the academic budgets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the athletic programs and the athletic budget is separate from the school. So let's take OU or, it's true. or uh, Ohio State, Alabama. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the athletic program or department may be generating a half a billion dollars a year while the school is generating another, and and it's totally separate money. Now the athletic program will pay the school a certain yeah they subsidize the academics right, but it's a certain amount. The school is not directly getting money, and the athletic program is not directly getting money from the. Uh, in fact, I think the way I think the way the school gets paid is the scholarship funds for the right. the kids that uh, attend academic for the academics mm -hmm. but uh, the way the re and I think the reason they did it is that basically the academic program said we will uh cover the expense the total expense related to all academics yeah so it's no expense to you right but at the same time all of the uh income remains here as well yeah and that's the nonsense when i used to hear at the capitol when i was there because you know we pay a billion dollars just about every year on a state budget to higher ed mm -hmm. and they would talk about how much money higher ed is paying bob stoops that he is the top paid state employee right right and i no 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 <laughs> Right. No, his no. money comes from that. Yeah, that's ABC a, Sports. Yeah, that's a free <laughs> yeah. enterprise yeah. venture that's subsidizing academics, right. so it doesn't cost as much for your kid to go to no. school. And they act like it's your tax dollars that pay Bob Stoops. Right? Exactly. No, no. Bob Stoops is actually paying your kids to go yeah, to school. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's true, and and people need to understand that that the uh, athletic program yeah. actually pays yeah the academics but it's not a all the money's together yeah it's two separate entities in fact they have their own um uh corporations yeah yeah, yeah. and they have their own boards yeah. that's why you have a board for ou sports or mm -hmm. actually i think they have a, a board for the football the whole football right. program has its own board and then you have the basketball mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. yeah yeah the athletic director set up those those things you know because they can't do it by yourself but i just want to say the irony uh because of your media contract that your conference has with the major medias you are actually being used to promote gambling mm -hmm. and you're taking the money to promote gambling but if one of your kids gets caught gambling you kick him off the team it's just so ironic yeah, they're trying to keep it, it pure, but I mean, you, I, I understand well, yeah, why. It, it doesn't mean it's not ironic. Though. Yeah, and and you know, and Pete Rose is still banned from from the Hall of Fame, which is yeah. stupid to me. It's <laughs> yeah. it's just crazy. Either he did what he did in sports, or he didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying. I don't it, see where he harms sports, I, or I, baseball, I or even no, the Reds. I, I don't either. Either Pete Rose. They accomplished what he, it's like Reggie Bush. Mm -hmm. Give him his Heisman back. Yeah. Especially now. Yeah. They're worried about $100,000 that his parents got, and they're paying these guys a million dollars. Come on. Yeah. You, know, you got girls like this girl I was talking about. I think her NIL is $2 million mm -hmm. a year, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and they're worried about Reggie Bush's parents getting $100,000 mm -hmm. for a house. Right. So what That's, I want to say 
You remember the famous Thanksgiving Day Leon let stupid play that uh, the Dallas Cowboys lost the game for? Okay, you know, he actually was playing for the other team. I remember back in the 70s when Carl Eller picked up a fumble and ran it the wrong way and scored a touchdown for the other team. And you still didn't kick him off the team for it. Right. So if you're gambling, betting for your team to win... Well, that's just more motivation to win. Exactly. You just shouldn't be able to vote uh, to to gamble against against your team, your team right? Because exactly. now you're an agent to, to helping the other team. Right. Exactly. Throwing the game. That that's like a a boxer throwing the fight. Yeah. Right. And and they're not doing that. Yeah. That it. Yeah. Everything. Everything in our world today is just so messed up. It's just I don't. I. Yeah. Where Where does it end? Yeah. I, I'll tell you where it ends. Hmm. When Jesus comes there back, we go. that's when it comes back. Yeah. Hey, okay, we probably, have we beat this horse to death yet? You, you know what it means? I'm just, I need my college sports fix. I'm glad summer's over. I'm I'm done well, with it. pro sports. You know what? I'm actually going to finally get back involved in fantasy football this year. There are actually two good games on today. Yes. Uh, Notre Dame, or two, two of the D1 teams playing today. Notre you, Dame. Yeah, and USC. USC plays tonight. Yeah, no, they're playing Fresno State, right. who's been the top pass rusher. Right, and uh, you, uh, Notre Dame is playing, um, who are they playing? Uh, San Diego State. Wow. Or UC San Diego, one of the two. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but but uh, I don't care, I'm watching anyway. I don't care who they're playing. They could be playing... New Mexico School for the Blind. I'll the USC Fresno, I'm kind of interested in. Yeah, because I want to see. Yeah, I want to uh, see what Caleb is. Caleb it's like a pre. It's a, it's a pre game. It's a pre. It's like a pre uh, preseason game. Yeah. Speaking of preseason, <laughs> my Chiefs. Amazing. My Chiefs are playing. Uh, they're probably playing right now. They're playing at, at one o'clock. I think mm-hmm. uh, the early game today. Yep. So, all right. Hey, listen. Uh, oh yeah, you had wanted to talk about the uh, rich man north of Richmond. Yeah, you 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 asked me earlier. Uh, you said there's a different spin that you have on it than others, yeah. and if I caught that, yeah. So what what is? Well, let's that? bring us up to date because it was after we record our last live right. show two weeks ago. Yeah, you were I really excited about. It. Like, my God, why didn't we cover this? Yeah, because this guy shot to number one on the charts. Yeah, now- he's just killing them. Yeah, he was really. Uh, or let me tell you what I got on it. Okay, yeah. he he told the GOP to not co-opt his song. That's the latest that he he has sent a message to the GOP leadership that he does not want them to use God, his it's song. Worse than I thought, because he <laughs> he did um he did a little YouTube update from his pickup truck mm-hmm. again. His first one since two weeks ago when he just released Rich Man to the radio uh, WV that was going to start pitching it. And he says, I, I hope some people enjoy this. I think it's going to be a good song. You know, little deal. Mm-hmm. So um, the last two weeks have been a wild ride for him. So Thursday morning, he gets in his cab again. It's raining out, and you can hear it on the roof of the uh, pickup. And he says, yeah, they, pl- they mentioned my song last night in the Republican debate. And he was disgusted. He says, right. I was, that song is about them. They're the rich men, North Richmond. Call the Republicans that. And then later he says, no, that wasn't a song about Joe Biden. And it reminds me of something, Eddie. Just give me a second. Is When I was in first grade, some kids taunted me on the playground saying, I like the girl who lived across the street from me. She was a heavy set, mentally uh, disabled. And I pushed her off the bus. Why? Because I was mad that people said I liked her. And I took it out on her. I'm so embarrassed and disgusted. Yvonne, I'm sorry. I mean, it was that terrible. And I think Oliver Anthony did the equivalent. Because so many Tea Party Republicans identified with the song and everything, he's afraid of being co-op that people think he's one of them. Right. And he so despises the Republicans. His bigotry is showing now. And his ignorance. Instead 
of saying, man, I am just glad that people of all parts of the spectrum are starting to get that it's the little guy versus big. It's not left versus right. It's little versus big. Instead, he couldn't get past it and he starts bashing the Republican Party. And I'm disgusted. Oliver Anthony, I thought you were bigger than this. You're not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I think he he probably is just another guy that wrote a song. Um I see I I think it goes two ways. I don't think he was specifically calling out the Republican Party. I think he was talking about the people on that debate. I, I agree with the you. people. In, in, in other words, had it been the Democrats doing it, he would have said it was about you. So, in other words, anybody in Washington, Democrat or Republican, it just happened to be the Republicans that were in the debate that that wanted to use it, and and they're just as bad. And and listen, we've we've said it too. They're just as bad. Uh, to, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, many of the oh, yeah. people, they're yeah. doing the same thing. Rich men in Richmond, I mean, or, or north of Richmond yeah. in D.C. Uh, I was just, in fact, before you came in, I was talking to a friend on the phone, and I was telling, telling them about people I know that got elected, had a huge debt, Went to D.C. and and others that had it wanting to go to D.C. and you know the the debt strangely disappears and as no. soon as they get out of uh, yeah the, I get the, it you know. Eddie so the, the thing is us Tea Party Republicans absolutely agree with that song oh yeah we, we do. do sure we do so it's not that i don't like the song i love the song i just i just was hoping that oliver anthony wasn't so narrow-minded well yeah, -minded yeah he didn't need it right no and no i agree he could have given a more balanced thing now when i just before i left town a couple weeks ago i said people are going to try to co-opt him yeah people are going to try he just he just rejected an eight million dollar signing bonus and you know you you've owned a record label you know how that game's played and stuff and he wants to stay independent and i'm like god bless him but you know what having some good advisors on publicity and stuff wouldn't have hurt you Oliver. see a better per what's, what's interesting uh, i don't know if you know who tom mcdonald is boy the name he's the rapper okay yeah he's a really outrageous yeah. looking guy tattoos mm -hmm. all over mm -hmm. and he's you could consider him a conservative rapper, mm -hmm. but he he's he's just Tom McDonald. Mm -hmm. Now he has not been co-opted, but the reason he hasn't been co-opted because he doesn't fit the mold of a Republican conservative. Right? Because he's so outrageous. He was he was uh, a drug addict. Fox mm -hmm. has had him on many times, but when you listen to his stuff, I mean, he attacks by he attacks the Democrats right straight on. Mm -hmm. But the Republicans haven't tried to co-opt him right. because he's so – he looks like a Democrat. He, he Everything about him you would think would be more right. left-leaning, but he's not. And well, it's so, the same reason we don't co-opt Malcolm X, but he went right. after the Democrats. Yeah, even right. Kanye. Mm -hmm. we're, what are we ready to do? Throw him under the bus mm -hmm. at, at the spring. See, this is, what, this is what makes me angry about uh, the Republican Party. Uh that that we we tend to it's mine mm -hmm. uh we tend to hitch our wagon to what seems so convenient mm -hmm. when when sometimes uh, we're just stupid just stupid yeah. rather than investigating and you, you know what this reminds me of you know the scripture uh don't lay hands on too quickly mm -hmm. you know tell my elders right. uh, don't don't be too quick to lay hands on mm -hmm people and elevate yeah. them that's what yeah, happens promoting a novice promoting a novice mm -hmm. uh, you know we don't nobody knew anything about this guy all of a sudden he does one song you know that song could have been about anybody you know so 
you know, okay, see ya. Uh, right. Now, now watch what happens to him and his song and popularity. Let's see if he now that he says, okay, I don't want anything to do with the Republicans. If that's how people will identify, let's see how popular he remains. Mm -hmm. Okay, he may have just kissed a, a gift horse in the mouth, sure, and 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 just said goodbye, mm -hmm. and uh, and next thing you know, he'll just be a yeah. one shot wonder and be history. You know, uh, uh, you know, he might have put a bullet in his own head. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we just don't know. But uh, what I'm saying is, you you can't. We we got to be more careful than that, right? Oh, one day I was at the Capitol talking to the Democrat leader at the time, Steve Copeland, and I mentioned, you know, just trying to introduce myself. It's just a one on one, right. and I said, you might call me a Tea Party Republican's probably best. And he said, you know, Dave, he said when the Tea Party first started, it was just as much Democrat as Republican. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm trying to get at here is a lot of our battles are. Big versus small, not left versus right. right. And so a lot of our allies, I mean, remember about six years ago when the legislature in Oklahoma is trying to raise taxes under Mary Fallon, and it was the Democrats and the Tea Party that joined forces to fight it for about two years. They were able to hold it back. And there are some time. this was our opportunity to realign things because a lot of our battles for liberty are big versus small what i'm going to say here now is i wonder if the republican party of virginia is partly to blame for how this common man blue collar guy in virginia views the republican party because the tea party message should have reached out to him it's about as bad as what happened to the Republican Party in Colorado. And now Colorado's solidly blue. And I know the people are not. No, no. I think Colorado's a different situation. And I, and, and, and I think Virginia, no, actually, I think Virginia and Colorado are saying uh, the Colorado situation and Arizona have been coming for a long time. What those are, and it's, it's going to happen in Texas and in Florida. Hmm. Um, what happened in Colorado is the early... Uh, migration mm -hmm. of Californians to Colorado and Arizona. And the reason I know this is um, uh, from Dr. Dobson. Okay. He wrote, I mean, man, we're talking in the early 2000s, him writing a letter how when they had, they moved, I think in the late 90s is when they moved. No, it was a late 80s. It was the late 80s. Because in 94, I went there to the Focus of Family Campus okay. at Colorado All Springs, right. and it was already huge. Okay, then it was in the late 90s when he wrote one of the newsletters saying that they're starting to see mm -hmm. Colorado starting to turn. Yeah. And then also wrote the same about Arizona. We're starting mm -hmm. to see it turn. And what it is, it's people coming from California migrating east. And, yeah. and, and, and eventually now it's happened. Those people have come and taken over Colorado and, and they're taking over Arizona. And I'm afraid it's, hap well, it's happened in Atlanta. Um, I'm afraid Texas is soon going to. It's in Austin and Dallas now. And I'm afraid it's it's going to spread. Well, yeah, I understand. But the way you fight against it in Colorado, good example, great Tea Party Republican Tom Tancredo ran for governor. When? This was in 10 or 12, 10. Okay. And uh, the Democrat or the Republican Party stacked the deck against him. He didn't get the nomination. And so he ran independently. And he got way more votes in the general election than the Republican nominee. But it split that mm -hmm. and split the message. And the Democrat ended up winning. And it's just falling apart. The splintering within the GOP. Right. The the GOP, the tall building bunch, fighting against reject, Almost like they're too embarrassed to have the Tea Party as part of their ranks. Yeah, but see, to me, the Tea Party is history. I, we need to even get rid of the name. 
I understand it, it reinvents itself all the time. Mega Republicans are essentially that same movement, just rebranded. Nah, I think it's a little different. Well, uh, it, it will always will be, but I'm just saying it's those that part of of conservatism that the little guy relates to. The issues of liberty often is part because the Ron Paul campaign was kind of sort of you know, amalgamation of Tea Party, but it wasn't. It was, it's just, it's, again, view things as little versus big instead of left versus right. Yeah, I see the uh, MAGA movement as a bigger, bigger than that. I, I see the MAGA movement as a total rejection of, I see it as a total rejection of everything that Washington stands for today. And uh, particularly the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, the the people that this guy, rich man north of Richmond, is saying. See, what's crazy is the rich man north of Richmond that this guy is uh, talking about. Um, the the MAGA people don't like them anymore. That's yeah. that's why that song resonated right. so much. Right, and uh, I don't think the Tea Party movement because. I'll never forget what was his name that had the big bus uh, army, Dick Army. Mm -hmm. That was he was the biggest huckster in the world. Yes. Okay. He, yeah. He co-opted that yes. whole deal, and it finally was exposed, and everybody realized. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have that. <coughs> uh, MAGA, I think I see it a little different because Trump hasn't tried to uh, merchandise it or make. He's actually just trying to. Uh, and you don't have, I mean, obviously you're always going to have little people that try to get their own little piece of the MAGA thing, MAGA pie, but it's a little different and it seems to be spread wider and larger and you don't have these local, I'm the local MAGA uh, king or the MAGA represent, you know what I mean? Well, I understand. But Remember like, like we had, like you had your local tea party and then I you had 912 and then yeah. you had, <clears throat> and mm. in fact, I think Tulsa had. That was one problem with the Tea Party is that every town had like five different representatives of of the Tea Party. Yes. And we're the we're the real Tea Party That's movement. That's exactly yeah. what I'm getting at here, Eddie, is is that people are co opting it for their own advancement right, right. instead of the issue advancement. Right. And what happens then is you got splintering happening where you should have unity being built and on. And that's the problem with the uh, Republicans anyway. But, yes. but but today we've got a bigger problem. It's a different problem. You've got too many rhinos mm -hmm. and then you've got kind of rhino, mm -hmm. not quite rhino, but they're kind of wavering. Yeah. You got Pharaohs, people that are afraid to, they, they can't make up their mind, you know, well, we like Donald Trump, but I'm not, I, I mean, right. I, 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 you probably communicate with someone, I'm not quite sure if he's really the and guy. And that's just it, and, uh, instead uh, of uh, celebrating what we agree on and building on that. Yeah. Because what we've seen happen since 2020, at least in Oklahoma GOP, is we're squandering dividing, kicking out, you know, I mean, all kinds of things instead of building because people want to keep control. Yeah. And you've got local leaders that are doing that. No, no. And, and it's harming things. But here's, I'm going to go back to what Steve Copeland said when he said there were just as much Democrats. He said because the Tea Party was about the too big to fail got bailed out and the mom and pops got nothing except the bill to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And boom, I mean, finally, a guy gets it. And I'm saying Richmond, North of Richmond kind of gives that message. Oh, no, no, I agree. And, and maybe the Republican Party needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. You know your your Mitch McConnell and so forth. Yeah, need to hear this, uh, rich men and women. Let's not leave the women yeah. out of it. I mean, I, I'll be real honest. I I don't even think it's that good of a song. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really don't think it's. I, I when I first heard when you sent it to me, oh, you got to hear. You know, you were all out of. And so I'm listening to this. I'm I'm watching this video and saying, well, that's not even a good song. Okay, but but 
you know, I know it resonated with a lot of people. The genuineness, the delivery of it was authentic as can be. Okay, Eddie. You know, <laughs> well, but, a lot of people but, connected. You did, and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You see, my problem is I come out of the music industry. Yeah. So I, I, I have a little more. Yeah. I, I don't want to use the word taste, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think of a more nuanced word, but a little more expectation. Mm -hmm. a little, I, I need a little more yeah, yeah. than that. So and and so uh, he didn't disappoint me with this. This doesn't really disappoint me. He he's a free individual. Mm -hmm. He can say whatever he wants. <clears throat> I'm gonna let him reserve. Uh, I don't think he's any happier with the Democrats. It's just. He didn't want to be co-opted. And, and, and in a way, I think he's smart because as soon as the Dem uh, the Republicans were to co-opt his music, he just killed himself with the Democrats. So right. why do that? And see, this is it, it drives me nuts why the Republicans want to run right out and make him ours. He's ours. He's not ours. He's well, not ours. But he, I think his own insecurities what played into that disavowing because he didn't want to be seen as something. Just like, that's why I use the analogy. I treated the girl across the street when I was in first grade fine until somebody said I liked her. Then I treated her lousy. Well, It was uh, well, because I, I didn't want to be co-opted. It bothered me. But I, I don't necessarily think he's treating us lousy. I think he's just treating us honestly. Uh, I to me no I, okay been, wait okay when you when you read that the guys in the debate the other night were some of the ones or were who he was talking about that's what he said okay I don't think he was saying I was talking about Republicans he said I was talking the songs about them about he says when I was writing about Richmond it was about them right right but what they stand for. I don't think no, I he meant it. this, that, you know. I get it. You see what Eddie, I'm saying? Eddie, you've done, enough, you've done enough publicity work in the music industry. Is it? You don't insult your customers. You just say, I'm, I appreciate that plenty of people on the right. I don't think, I don't think it, that's his customer. See, that's what he's saying. That's not his customers. Those were just... I I didn't like that thing. I you mean, said yourself, I didn't even let's watch see, it. Let, let's see how he does on the charts now. Yeah, no, no, that's I will. A, no, I will. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Because I'm afraid a lot of people are going to take it the way you. I'm not afraid, but I believe a lot of people are going to take it like you did. Uh, that he was insulting Republicans. He was just saying, "Look, don't try to co-op my song and make it about." Uh, anti-Democrat, yeah, which is you're making it anti-Republican. Well, now, if the Democrats try to do it, what will he do? He said the song was about them, referring, and then later he says the song's not about Joe Biden. Boom. What? He said both of those things. I understand. Yeah, it's not about Joe Biden specifically. But he's talking about okay. I, I'm not gonna okay. Uh, we, we we interpret it differently. Yeah. I don't see it that way. I don't see him talk. He can't talk about rich men north of Richmond and only be talking about one party. It's impossible because right because in right. Washington D.C. Yes, we are not even the majority exactly. in the Senate. Okay? Exactly. All right. So the rich men north of Richmond has to be everybody in the Senate yeah. and everybody in that. Because I think a lot of those guys on the stage fit the description of his song. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. that's what I believe he was saying. And he and what he's trying to do is look. I'm not. Who is it? Uh, is it a uh, uh, what's a little short black comedian? Uh, that's real popular now. Uh, well, he's doing all the commercials. He does these uh, credit card commercials. Oh, yeah. I, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I was going to say Chris Rock, but no, he's, no, he's, no, he's no. been around a lot longer. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, anyway, they, they, were, they were trying to uh, get him to come out against Republicans. Yeah. And he said, I'm not, he said, are you crazy? I'm not going to do it. Republicans come to my shows. Exactly. Republicans, I'm not going to offend them. And that's what I think that he is doing here. He said, my songs are for everyone. He said, I'm not going to attack Joe Biden. I'm not going to attack uh, specifically Republicans. I'm talking about 
everybody in in the guys who were in that debate the other night they typify if you had a, a democrat debate and you try to say they were attacking the republican no i'm talking about you guys too you're not off the hook he said don't don't peg me don't put me in a category that you're off the hook because you guys are just as bad as these guys. Yeah. You see and, what I'm and saying? That's a, I think he, his fear, what motivated him was he was being pigeonholed. Exactly. And he doesn't want to he do that. He doesn't want to be pigeonholed. And I didn't want to be pigeonholed as liking the girl across the street. And that's what led me to treat her lousy. Yeah. I'm talking, I think his message to try to combat that was less than artful. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, and it, it came at a bad time. Yeah. It was bad timing. That yeah. It was the day after the, the yeah. debate. It, I think that debate had many flaws. It, 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 it was just circumstantial. Yeah, I think it's a good segue for you to talk about the debate. Though. Yeah, yeah. And, and doing that, the fact that it, it came on that day, he comes out the next day, and then it came out the day before Donald Trump's uh, arraignment there in uh, – mm-hmm in uh, yeah. uh atlanta uh so many you know it, it was just snuffed out yeah um, almost you know <laughs> to the and what's funny on on uh wednesday night mm-hmm. and even on on uh, the next day thursday all i was hearing is vivek 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 okay by yesterday all of a sudden i'm hearing DeSantis is growing in the polls. DeSantis is closing the gap. DeSantis, and it's Who's almost saying that. Uh, on Fox news, on, news. Well, in the Newsmax this morning, even even I'm is putting, saying Fox News is going all in. Oh yeah. DeSantis. Oh oh no. I know. I know. They are worse. They, to me, they are more dangerous than CNN. Yeah. Because a lot of conservatives still think they have some credibility. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, even even uh, but it, the poll, you know. A poll. It just says on Newsmax, a poll. Yes, and it was Fox News that first wrote that story. Right. Then Newsmax decided to write something on it. But I'm sorry, DeSantis was a sleeper as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, I agree. But but what I'm saying is, but that's what's so funny that the night of and the day after, everybody was talking about Vivek Ramaswamy just cleaned up. And then the next day, you know, two days later, all of a sudden, DeSantis is closing the gap and you know, he did great and da 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 da. <clears throat> yeah, you can see you can see what's mm-hmm. going on, what they're trying to do. And this is this is what <sighs> it is so alarming to me and it almost makes me want to just throw out my hands, throw in the towel and say, Donald, just just let him have it. Let him drop all the charges, tell him take your country and shove it. Mm-hmm. You couldn't blame him if he did. No, no, you couldn't. Yeah, I, I tell you what, everything about that debate, who got attacked the most, and how the spin went afterwards, all of it tells me the number two guy in the polls is Vivek Ramaswamy. That's because, what I think. Because he's who the rest of them went after. Right. Because Vivek is saying very much the same things Trump is saying. Right. That, and so they're making him the whipping boy. Right. They're going after him, and by God, he's taking no prisoners. Right, he is. I yeah, they're pulling out all kinds of stuff, you know. And and, you know, Pence is pathetic. I mean, it's just sorry, you got nothing. Um, you know, few people had some cute. I I was glad to see the big mouth, basically neutered. I mean, Christie neutered. You know, and because uh, he's only in it to give Pence a chance. Right. Yeah. They should get Christy, Pence, and uh, what's the name from Arkansas? Oh, Asa. <laughs> Who is it calls him? Somebody on the radio calls him Asa all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, those three should be immediately just kicked off. Oh, yeah. It is. And, uh, and, you know, Larry Elder now is going to sue because he says he qualified, but they said he did. And he said, they illegitimately said he mm-hmm. didn't qualify. They lied, so he's suing. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, the other one, uh, what's the billionaire guy? Um, he he's on Fox uh, on a Newsmax. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what can I think of his name? Perry something. Yeah, Perry Perry whatever. But anyway, he's another one. I think he may be suing as well. But Johnson Perry Johnson. Yeah. 
And uh, he's another one that says he qualified yeah. as well, and they, they kept them off the stage. So I don't know. It, it's uh, You know what I wanted to uh, – I want, I'm going to put Nathan Dom on the spot here right now. This was an RNC decision to go with Fox. This was an RNC essentially endorsing that Fox is helping the Republican Party by putting this on. And I think it falls on the RNC to say, we've had enough of this. We're not going to put up with it. I can see Ronna McDaniel being co-opted, going deep state and some others. But I think you take Pam Pollard, who really campaigned against Ronna. She wanted to go a different direction. Nathan's knew he wasn't part of that decision. But I think I really would like to see Pam, Nathan, and the Oklahoma three members stand up and get some allies from the heartland to say, Ronna, you got to steer this ship right because you're steering it into a shipwreck. Well, have you have you seen her lately? Uh, Ronna? I don't know, boy, she spent a lot of money on her cosmetics. Well, I, I think it's more than cosmetics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's more more like a cosmetic surgery. Yeah. Oh, she looks weird. I mean, <laughs> she's just totally, and I'm sorry, Ron, it didn't help. Yeah, uh, I know. Uh, but I really, I really have a problem. It just seems like they've got to throw Trump under the bus. It's kind of funny. They'll call these charges frivolous, but then say... But he's indicted, so we can't have him. You know, it either it is. Well, or no, he, he 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 didn't want to. He he, they they would have had him on there, but he. he no, I get that. Oh. But when it comes, oh, to you're talking said, about people supporting him. Yeah, they said, "What would you pardon him?" They called all the charges oh, frivolous. Oh, yeah. but they wouldn't pardon him. Yeah, that's crap. And even DeSantis was had to look around and see and oh Vivica well then he raised yeah, his head. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. he, you're just pathetic. Yeah, he is. I mean that's the thing. That's what he is really a wishy washy mealy mouth yeah. That's what, what gets me about DeSantis. He's not ugh, he he's not no. a man. He's not a man. Uh, personally, yeah. No, that doesn't take away from his administration handling Florida. Oh, yeah. No. Well, I'll give that good. But you know what? Florida has a machine there. Exactly. The Republican it, Party. Yeah, that's right. Because all the Republicans have done well. Well, as you know, the, the attorney generals have been mm -hmm. very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, uh, lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. I mean, down yeah. the line, yeah. they, they're they very strong people mm -hmm. down there. Right. So I would say it's not necessarily wrong. Yeah. And a longtime friend of mine is one of those. He you know, was our state senator, Don Rubottom from South Tulsa, went there to become chief of staff for Rubio and then clerk of the House, mm -hmm. which is part of that long-term Republican state administration yeah, state, team. state House is and, yeah. and so, And I wish Oklahoma actually had that instead of the Mickey Mouse infighting we got going on between Treat and, and Stitt and, and uh, you know, McCall. It's pathetic. It's and then we've selfishness. got our attorney general here, and it's it's like our yeah. st our state is emblematic of the Republican Party throughout the country. Yeah, and yeah, and you're not at least at least they're doing something right there. And in many ways, I would say Texas is, mm -hmm. you know. But Texas I mean, the legislature now is impeaching Paxton, one of the greatest attorney generals we've had from any state. Yeah. You know, it's just asinine. You, you know what it is. Yeah. It, somebody, somebody, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the first name's George. Uh, <laughs> Uh, or yeah. Carl? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not not a Republican. Uh, oh, okay. Somebody George. Well, uh, we I, have I, one. In, we have one in Tulsa. Uh, yes. Uh, in, uh, yes. Also named George. Yes. But uh, a mini, a mini version. But yeah. anyway. Um, but I think what you've got there is people with personal ambitions for higher office. You know, is the speaker going to be the next governor of Texas, or is the attorney general? I think that's what you got going on here in Oklahoma. Is it Greg Treat and McCall going to run for governor next? Or Gettner Drummond? Because I really think it's as simple as that. It's personal ambition, and anybody in my way, I'm taking them out. I hope it's none of the above. Yeah, but this is they're acting like the narrative I'm telling you. Because you know, they're not growing a movement. 
the issues are why we're we're on this side. You know, and and they don't get it. Yeah, they think we love them. That's see, and that's the that's a problem with politicians. Yeah, they get caught up. They think that we love them. Yeah, we love the issues. Well, they love themselves. Yes, so. yes. Hey, um, let's let's finish up with, um, and we can take some time here. Um, our friend and a person that is under as much assault as Donald Trump. Ryan Walters. Yes. Uh, it, it's crazy. Uh, I've got to give it to him, though. Ryan is uh, hanging in there. He is hanging there with both feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, tough. I'm on Twitter, or X, Xter, as I like to call it, Xter. I'm still going to call it Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, Twix, Twix. Yes. But, uh, no, uh, our superintendent of public education has been under attack since he was elected mm -hmm. and he is now under extra barrage because the uh, there's an audit been called for for Tulsa mm -hmm. and they want to take away the accreditation for Tulsa public schools mm -hmm. which would deny Tulsa public schools funding mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, there's a major uproar. Now, before the investigation, interestingly enough, the superintendent of Tulsa Public Schools has strangely resigned. God, thank you, God. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Many years too late, but it yeah. finally came. But suddenly we're going to investigate, and now she decides she's going to resign. Yeah. Of course, they're making it look like, oh, she just can't handle the persecution she's receiving mm -hmm. from Ryan Walters. Yes. And she's got these minions and these people the victim on, card. on Twitter that are just, it's too much for her. And the sad thing is there's a way too many people call themselves Republicans, especially rural Oklahoma, yeah. who are, are taking the side of the worst superintendent in Oklahoma history. Yeah, and I don't understand it because, honestly, where's the threat to them? Yeah. I mean, what is it to them? The, is he planning on taking money from them? Why don't, if their schools do what they are going to do, I'll mm -hmm. tell you what it is. They're being paid by the school lobby. They're getting money from the school lobby i bet you i would i'd be willing to bet you they are receiving money from the school lobby mm -hmm. and that's the only reason i can think for it yeah. I, I welcome them to contact us and come on here and tell us why they have good reason to come after him what how he is hurting their school districts yeah. in their own district mm -hmm. that they have to get involved yeah. in what he's doing in other districts yeah I've got some simple numbers for you. There you this go. OCPA. Okay, please. The expense, the money they get in the, in Tulsa County, uh, the, our Tulsa public, public schools, school. every year per kid, seventeen thousand dollars. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. I didn't think it was that big. I thought it was eleven or twelve. It, it was 000. twelve, but. Your capital gains expenditures, because they will right. divert right. a lot That's of those things. That's the state and federal, but then you got your uh, uh, property tax money on top. Well, of property it. tax and yeah, in those levies for you know bond issues for things that last, I think, five years or more or something like that, okay. like buses, because they're all part of the expense of educating. It's all money coming out of our pockets. Seventeen thousand dollars. Per child. Per child. That's more than double the average private school yeah. in Tulsa. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so you've got that. Uh, only 15% of the kids are reading at grade level. 15%. You know, so you've got all kinds. They have, you know, COVID, we were one of the worst for not reopening. And then on any given day during the online, 25% of the kids were absent on average any given day. 
you know, we just, it's just disaster every which way you look at it. And not only were we paying, you know, the top superintendent expenditure, you know, uh, salary package, but she had like six people under her as assistant superintendents that together were making like double or triple that. So she's just farming out to everybody else. Then Elena comes sits here last year about this time and tells us that they came up with, they, I think it was $30,000 they could not account for on internal accounting. So she calls for an audit. God bless you, Elena. Because that $30,000 all of a sudden is a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. And it. they're admitting that it's been um, embezzlement. They're she, admitting it's been yes. And, and, and what's her name? Deborah Gist is saying it's one isolated incident of embezzlement. In one, okay, so one person? That's what she's claiming. Took a million dollars. Yeah. And, and Ryan Walters, and by the way, I reached out to um, uh, Don Burdick, who's a member of the state school board. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to have him in on the show because he's going to look at it. It's not about personalities. It's about the, the evidence. And they said for years, when they've come up for reaccreditation, they said, you do not have safeguards in place to make sure that the money isn't being misappropriated. And we've got situations where people are, they're billing the district and not saying what for. And then you've got those vendors than giving money to specific people as personal gifts inside the, the administration. And it looks like money laundering. It looks absolutely like money laundering. And so I think we've got to have, uh, you know, a call for criminal investigation at this point. I think we need a forensic audit at, at this point. It's clear. And Deborah Gist, you know, um, you don't go too far. We find out you got an airline ticket to Cuba. We're going to say, you know what? The woman looks guilty. She looks guilty. But I think more right now, she's trying to hide behind uh, the excuse of incompetence because that's the only other thing you could gross incompetence. Right. She didn't want to know. I mean, she was, you know, Schultz, Sergeant Schultz. Yeah. I see nothing. Yeah, no, <laughs> you saw plenty. Yeah, I'm still uh, appalled at the state legislature because some of them I, I deal with on Exeter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't believe some of the stuff these people are oh, writing. Oh, yeah, the here. Democrats, yeah. Well, They're, even... They, even Deborah Gist is a saint to them. Oh, oh yeah, it's just unbelievable. And, and Ryan Walters has horns and a tail. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's empty, empty reasoning, you know, that they... They just don't, they, from the day one, mm -hmm. you know, they're all, they've been attacking him. Yeah. Do you know of the, if you take the 5,000 biggest school districts in the nation and you look at their ap academic record, Tulsa is below 1%. Uh, they are the lowest of the low within those 5,000 biggest. Again, for a school district that we're paying $17,000 per kid per year. Where are we now? Number forty-seven or forty-eight? Oh, it depends who's rankings. You know how subjective that can be. But we're still in the bottom three, at least. Oh yes, but and that's just as a state, right? And we got some good school districts that make up for the. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I'm see, saying yeah. this is taking school district to school district, right. and you're number four thousand nine hundred eighty-two out of five thousand. That's how low you are. Four nine eighty two. Forty nine eighty two. That means, that means eighteen. Eighteen that are arguably worse out, out of five thousand. Yes. Yeah. That's how bad. And this is coming from OCPA. They right. do great research. Yeah. I've worked with those guys for years. They're fantastic. So, um, yeah. I mean, students are averaging three point five grade levels below average on reading. Three point five grade levels below. Yeah. Now, I didn't do nearly as good a job as I wanted to homeschooling. But when my kids went to get their driving, your reading test, right. you need to get your license, they were all at college level. Mm -hmm. And because uh, you have to be at eighth grade to get 
that. Yeah, yeah. When you're in 10th grade, you have to read 8th grade in order to get that. You know, and these are kids that at 8th grade are reading somewhere between 4th and 5th grade on average. That means some of them can't read at all. <laughs> Yo, jeez. Yeah. That's how bad it is. That is. That's bad. It's bad. You know, and the, I mean, and I live in the Tulsa Public School Districts. You think I'm ever going to let my kid, <laughs> you know, I didn't. And thank God I did. I was going to say, you can have a few more. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's bad, and and you know, in in the center of town, uh, this area where where we're broadcasting from, mm -hmm. this is yeah, gist area. Just, I mean, these people vote for her yeah. religiously. Yeah, that's what's so that's what's so sad. You know what they call these people? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand what's wrong with the minds of the mm -hmm. how they have been so brainwashed and so controlled. To where they don't even come up for air to mm. to try to reasonably understand what's going on. You know what they call people like you who moved out of Tulsa Public School District and into Union or Jinx or Owasso? Deserters. Loving parents. <laughs> Why would you put your kid in something like yeah. that? Because, I mean, I mean, Eddie, your kid's... I think they were going to do well regardless yeah. just because of their home environment and right. that. Yeah. But you got so many strikes against you, you know, when you've got a system. I mean, like, I couldn't believe it. my my friends, uh, my, my son's friends go to youth group and they live in, you know, Fairmont Terrace. They got kicked out of school. I said, why? This is because a guy hit me. Kid hit me. I said, you got kicked out? He said, yeah, because I put my arms up to protect my face. And that was Casinas fighting. Putting your arms up like this. Yeah. It's like I was talking about earlier. I'm going to stand there and let a girl hit me with a stick yeah. over and over. And, and that would be considered the chivalrous thing to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. These people, these people have no concept of, of reality. Yeah. I mean, the nuns at the Catholic schools were better than that. The nuns. Yeah. Yeah. They would say, Tommy, you got to defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, Tommy, let me show you how you do this. Yeah. <laughs> smack, smack, smack. Be, be smacking the kid around. Okay, Tommy. Now, you go back and you, this is how, now you show you do it. Yeah. I mean, we're living in one of the worst hellholes of a school district in America. In America? Yeah. There's only 12, 18 worse. Yeah, yeah, arguably worse. Yeah, no, <laughs> arguably the worst. Yeah, I, it, it is bad. And 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 like I said on on Twix, uh, we, you, you can't. But you got. Are you on it? Are you on it? Yeah. Okay. I guess we just don't see each other. But I, yeah. I, I actually deal with these people. I mean, they are on Ryan Walters case. Oh, yeah. yeah. all the time, and I just sit there and I can't believe it. And boy, they hate me. Oh, which reminds me, uh, what's what's the guy, the one guy on Frontier? Oh, Dylan Goforth yeah. is who you deal with. <laughs> yeah, he. There was a time up until about two years ago, uh, where. <clears throat> He, uh, he seemed like he was pretty reasonable yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, He I'll tried to be. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what I think happened. I think I, I, I'll tell you my suspicion. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if this is. Some would say <laughs> uh, probably what I think happened there in some cases, what, let's put it this way. Sometimes what happens at places, they run into financial problems. Mm -hmm. And then someone comes along and offers to bail them out. Mm -hmm. Offer them some financial mm -hmm. assistance. Someone named George? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. And if they begin taking a certain position mm -hmm. more vigorously. Yeah. And I don't know. I just suspect maybe that that's what's ha right. helping that maybe that's what's ha some would say that that's what happened. They right. got a financial in infusion 
to start writing things. Right. Well, so. the Lorton's family, the son, started Frontier, and he tried to do it at, in a you know free enterprise model, right. a subscription in that. And then when that failed, you know, he was trying everything. And so now, yeah, they're kind of a you know a, a nonprofit. And so they're asking for donations. And a lot of times what happens with those nonprofit educational radio stations, you'll get money under the guise of to cover an issue. And when they mean cover an issue, it's a certain narrative and framing the issue the way they want. And I've been privy to watching a lot of those, especially when I was working in mental health. I saw people saying, hey, we want you to cover mental health in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, I forget which one. Is. But anyway, they they would do that. And they're trying to frame an issue a certain way. So in it's easy for a journalism outfit like this to get caught up. Now with Dylan, he and I go way back, especially to even before the George Floyd riots, where the whole thing was, you know, it's okay to punch a Nazi. He drank the whole thing in. And I said, now define a Nazi. And that's the thing. Whoever you want to call a Nazi, right. now right. it's justified to punch him. Right. Because he's a Nazi. Right. Why is he a Nazi? You know, never, <laughs> or, or fascist, you know, it was yeah, another fascist. bunch of fascists. And fascism is an economic system that Obama was pitching. I mean, Obamacare is pure fascism because you still have your private, you know, enterprise corporations, but they pick the winners and losers. Blue Cross is way bigger now under Obama. Oh, I yeah. mean, if you're Goldman Sachs, they got rid of Lehman Brothers, who was your only competition. And you got the bailout and Lehman didn't. That's fascism. That is government highly regulating picking winners. What, what's the uh, bank? I mean, that, that went under with... Uh, well, Bank of Oklahoma. Is, no, no. I'm talking about recently the bank. Oh, right. Yeah, there's a few of them have gone under and yeah. they bailed them out. And and not, not with the, you know, they didn't give them just the uh, SLIC funds or the FDIC they they bail them out a hundred percent right of because it's all of the rich people's right. money whereas the other banks they're only going to give the depositors right the minimum i mean yeah. you know the maximum two thousand dollars but per yeah. person but that's how george kaiser really got his break oh i know because bok went under he took it and then he was the only one to be a recipient of all this federal money and they made him whole when he had junk bonds. I mean, you know, worthless. I'd be okay was just in ashes. I mean, it, well, it actually, yeah, I read the whole. There's a whole story on how that happened. It, it, was, it is weird, but yeah, basically, he's the only one to get the sweetheart deal. Well, he was he was the head of the dissolution board. Mm -hmm. He set the amount for the dissolving of it, mm -hmm. which was like. A, a hundred uh hundred and ten million dollars but they were three hundred and some million dollars uh in in the hole mm -hmm. so what they did they got uh tax credits mm -hmm. of three hundred million so he sold the extra two hundred million at fifty percent mm -hmm. which means he had an extra hundred million he yeah. paid off the the hundred and ten yeah. had another hundred million. Yeah, took it over King. using other people's money. Other people's money. Yeah. Hey, but now here's the funny thing about that, though. The funny thing about that is that I had to say, man, to be smart enough to figure out how to do that. But the only thing I question about that is how can you <coughs> be on the board and head of the board right. that – determines all of that and then still be the person that comes back <laughs> well i mean you, that that's the only thing get, i say. see gettner drummond got trashed for doing the same thing he owns a bank uh -huh. in oklahoma and he got the covid money because he had to go through a bank for that so his law firm got the money that was supposed to be um confirmed and legitimized by a bank looking at it. So he had his own bank look at it. And he got every and it was a forgivable loan. It was a big, big federal handout. He got in fact it was more, I think, than he spent on his campaign 
So you could easily argue that it was our tax dollars that paid for him to defeat his opponent. Yeah, some of that stuff. <clears throat> the only thing I thought about George Kaiser, though, was that I couldn't really um, hate the guy about it because I could only admire the brain. Yo, yeah, yeah, to the, because it's legal. Yeah. Everything he did was totally it, it's legal. legal. But it's not something that's available to mom and pops. Well, true, true. No, no, I understand. But but just to to have the mind and the wherewithal to pull it off. I know it, it's admirable. But it's systems they set up for the big players. Well, yeah, yeah. Whoever set it all up, that's who you have to uh, be upset about and, and ask how. And who and why can't you change that? Yeah. Same with the whole, you know, another whole issue would be the turnpike authority. Yeah. I mean, you know, to look at that, there's right. no reason we should still have a turnpike. Authority. Right. And the incestuous relationships of many federal agencies, like the CDC. And state. I mean, right. when you got most of the people running the CDC coming from the pharmaceuticals, you know, and they're regulating pharmaceuticals, and then they go back to work for the pharmaceuticals. Oh, the military. Yeah, military guys end up going work for the uh, the wet arms armament dealers. Hello, the Jim Bridenstine. That's what he does now. Yeah. He yeah. is er raising money for aerospace contracting firms. He didn't say who, but is like because I told him I you know when he was he mentioned he's not going to run again. He was at one of our political events, a media I put together, and. He said, "No, I want to go back, and I want to, you know, rejoin the Air National Guard. No one does." And I, I want said, to make well, some money. And well, but no, he didn't. I, I know he, he didn't say, say that. He, but no, he was telling about go back to serving in the Guard and just. Oh, got, oh. And I said, "Well, if you do that, you'll be the first former congressman to, after leaving office, come back and live amongst the people." And I said, "The last one was Paige Belcher. Now I can't promise you anything, but we named a golf course after him." We don't have a golf course named Steve Largent or John Sullivan. You know, they're lobbyists. They went on to make their millions lobbying afterwards. And it's just, it, it kind of turns you off, you know? Yeah. yeah. They're just, and so, yeah, it, it, it just sad to me because they know how to work the system and stuff. And it's when it's things that you and I don't get to do, but they do, we put them there. We put them there. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, uh, did we? Uh, I want real quick Staten Island. That's a f quick. Yeah. One. yeah okay. Yeah. So what has happened with all these sanctuary cities for decades now? You've had these liberal eastern cities who never thought they would actually have to house immigrants. That you know declared sanctuary cities and all look good and got reelected and stuff. Well, that includes New York. And Eric Adams, who's now mayor of New York, now all of a sudden has to make good. And thank you to Ron DeSantis and to, you know, uh, Greg Abbott and all those guys who are bussing people up there and dumping them. And by the way, these are people that said, yes, I'll take a free bus trip to New York. OK, so they all, this wasn't kidnapping. They actually went. But here's the thing. In New York City, I learned so much more by going last summer. You've got a little area on the southern, west, southwestern tip, right up against the Jersey mainland, called Staten Island. That's where all the conservatives in New York City area want to live. And they had a big protest last night, huge protest, because Eric Adams bust a massive load of these immigrants, dumped them on Staten Island. These are people who want the city, their tax dollars, police force, to enforce immigration law. And they won't. But they're dumping them specifically on that borough. The borough that says, this is nuts. This is illegal. And so you look out. You're going to see some pretty crazy stuff happen in Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, they, um, in Chicago had a similar thing uh, where the... Uh, the black community, mm -hmm. they don't want them. They didn't want right. them. And they, they basically ran them out of there, kind of like the Yeah, they bust them in Naperville. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They say, we don't want them here. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's crazy. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about one more thing, by the way, um, in, in the whole uh, 
Atlanta indictments mm-hmm. and that whole oh, deal. Oh, the Fulton County Circus. The Fulton <laughs> County Circus, yes. Um, the um, head of the um, Blacks for Trump. Okay. Are you familiar with this whole still? I can't think of his name. I was trying to. Uh, oh, there was a former state representative that got pretty popular. And he ran for Congress, didn't make it. Oh, you know, yeah, no, this isn't the guy. Oh, okay, uh, different guy. Yeah, I'm trying to, man, um, I'm trying to find his name here, but um, I've got his picture here, but they, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure he'd be on this list. Uh, I'm trying to find a nice place where they just list them all uh, in a nice order. Anyway, the the he's uh, was the head of the Blacks for Trump, and he doesn't even live there, but he's the only one who has been arrested. Oh, Harrison William Prescott Floyd is one of the is people that Harrison turned, Floyd. Yeah, turned himself into Fulton County Jail in right, Atlanta. Right. A week after being indicted. He's indicted? Yeah, he's indicted. And here's what's funny. Here's That's here, racism. Well well, okay, get this. <laughs> but here's what's bad about it, okay? The reason that he's indicted is because they have not set bail. They won't set bail. And the judge who who is overseeing this decided to go on vacation. Oh, God. So he can't get bail set until he gets back from vacation. So they want him to sit in the jail, one of the most dangerous jails in the country. And filthy. I saw pictures of the cell. It's just yeah. ridiculous. So he's got to sit in this cell. So then I saw a video uh, this morning. I was watching a video. They had a, a female hearing a special hearing on him uh in case, and she said well she wasn't going to do it while this guy is out of she can't do it she's not or i didn't say she couldn't she just said she wasn't going to she was going to wait and let the other judge do it but the other judge is on vacation mm-hmm. so until this guy gets back this guy has to sit in jail and he's the only black he's the only black i mean this is like a georgia justice mm-hmm. uh but so until the other judge gets back they're going to keep the black guy in jail see no in our constitution there's something called habeas corpus you would think that's a right to be heard by a judge to get to 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 be to stand before a judge to right. make your case right and I think that's supposed to be within 48 hours. Well, and he did, but this judge who he stood before said she's not going to do it until the other judge gets back. I mean, I honestly, I think this guy, just based on that, I think he's got a case for them to throw the whole thing out. Uh, yeah, well, right. Well, that's a case for definitely suing for violation of your constitutional rights. Right. That's a 14th Amendment violation. Yeah, right you there. would think, right. Because the 14th Amendment says whatever the federal government is bound to do the states now are bound to do when it comes to protecting your rights, your liberties. Yeah. And so they're basically locking this guy up because the judge is on vacation. Yeah. And he's being put into this uh, jail. Yeah. Amazing justice in this country. Yeah. I mean, the, see, this is, this is the thing where And and it's not that he can't come up with bail. It's, they won't even set bail. They won't set bail. Yes, not going to let him out till I'm done fishing. Right. Yep. I'll, I'll be back in the country whenever. Yeah. Right. right. That's nuts. I mean, if this is not, you know, and and the Democrats are just with glee loving this, you know, and 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 the black Democrats are the ones that are most joyful on it. I mean, and, and it, it's thing. it's just so sad. I mean, it, it, this shows how crazy this is, yeah. and it and it shows how evil, evil. Yes. The only thing I can pray for scripturally is that the daggers turn and enter their own hearts. Honestly, I just pray for God's vengeance upon these people. I, right. I'm sorry. I, I, I make no no bones about it. I truly, truly want God's vengeance to come upon everyone involved in persecuting Donald Trump and the people yeah. involved because these are, first of all, not crimes, and this is injustice. So if yes. anyone truly wants to see justice, let it true justice be done and come upon those people persecuting everyone being persecuted in Atlanta mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Um, so be it. 
your your friend, the talking gorilla, Joy Reid, um, she stepped in it this week. After the Trump indictment, she said, I grew up in New York City. And I would just despise all these rich men that get to do, you know, get away with this, get away with that and everything. And she said, that's why I hate Trump. That's why I've hated him from the beginning. Because he's rich. She had, that is bigotry. That is prejudice. Yeah, that is absolute prejudice. Textbook prejudice. And you know, it's who they hate even worse than a guy like Trump with blonde hair is they hate a black man yeah. who leaves the reservation. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, it's like Clarence Thomas said, it was a high tech lynching. It, it's that, that chapter I have uh, in here. Uh, I have to reference my own yeah. book, but uh, uh, from plantation to the kennel. Mm. From slaves to pets. Oh, Joy Reid is one of the pets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, that I, that is probably the my favorite chapter that I wrote because wow. it's so true. Joy Reid is a pet, mm -hmm. and uh, and if you want to just go to if you haven't gotten it, that 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 is the chapter right yeah. there that sums it all up. This uh, the DA in New York, this. One in Atlanta, all the black DAs around the country that are doing these things, they're all pets mm -hmm. of the Democrat kennel. Yeah. The, That's all there. The reason why Clarence Thomas is hated by Biden is because he's black. While and being and he has escaped. He has gotten out of the kennel, and they're sicking these mad dogs after him. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are just pets yeah. that have been sicked on these free black people yeah. to bring them back. And, and what I want to say and this goes bigger than just if you're black if you're female if you're American Indian, if you're handicapped, if you name the whatever quote victim that you wear, whatever card of being disadvantaged when you deign to do for yourself without government programs, you are a threat to the big government. They need you depending on them. They need you to be a poster child for them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, they will discredit you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, thank you for getting into the Fulton County Circus issue today, too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's something else, um, the, the way this whole thing is playing out. And uh, again... This should not be happening, and Republicans, when I see Republicans on the air that are giving credence to this, then I say, you are a traitor. Yeah. They're, they're, you need to turn in your Republican. You have nothing to say to me. Yeah, did you notice something that was missing in those debates? The moderators, quote moderators, the Propagandists from Fox News, Brett Baer, uh, Andrew, uh, what's her name, McCollum? Uh, yeah. Um, anyway. I forget. Yeah. Martha. Martha. Martha McCallum. In that they never once asked, you know, is this a travesty what they're doing to Trump? Or they never asked, were there any irregularities in the 2020 election? They didn't ask that. No, they're afraid to. Yeah. You know, and th so they're steering this. Folks, if you're conservative and you're counting on Fox News, I warn you, get away. Get away. And the next uh, the next debate, it's on Fox Business. Yes, who still get their paycheck from yeah, Rupert. I don't know who's hosting it, but if it's not Maria Bartiromo, if it's, I, I, I would bet you it's um, Cavuto. If it's Cavuto, uh, you know Trump is not taking part in it. He's the worst. Yeah, he's it he's another anti-Trumper. Never Trump. I mean, you know, and these to me, they represent the Fox News idiots like that. Represent Richmond North, <laughs> Richmond North, <laughs> because I mean, they want it both ways. They're yeah. what you call. Um, uh, chamber crats, <laughs> you know the the big business in bed with big yeah. government. Now I'll tell you what, if it is. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Maria. Maria. If it's yeah. Maria Bartiromo, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, even Elizabeth McDonald, mm-hmm. okay, I respect highly. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to get some legitimate, yeah, question. Uh, Charles, uh, Charles, what's his name? The black uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, money guy. Yeah, uh, that's one thing I have to say about Fox News. I mean Fox uh, Business. Mm-hmm. They have some legitimate good good people. Okay. Yes, but. Even they have a few that, you know, if they if they throw in the A team, you'll have a good, yes. you'll have a good debate. If if they throw in the B guys, nah, it's yeah, going right. to be just another. So that's what's going to determine whether Trump will d- participate or not. Best news of the week: Tucker Carlson sits down, oh yeah, with Trump, and has at least ten times. And the viewers. These, well, that first I heard was eighty million, but then I think by now they've had three hundred million mm-hmm. views. Yeah, and yeah. and and the Fox uh, had I think eleven million. Yeah, in fact, it was half of what it was in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, here's what it does to the Ruperts of the world. If you try to sit on Maria and tell her what she can and cannot do, she can go all Tucker Carlson on you. And start her own media operation. Oh, oh my goodness! Yeah, Can because you Tucker's already getting millions in revenue. Yeah, and I'm telling you this. Yeah, can you imagine if 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 Tucker decided to start his network, and and then all of a sudden you had a bunch of people flee Fox Business and Maria and them start a new business network. Yeah, let's say a Newsmax business network with with, with Tucker. Or I mean, you know, Newsmax, but have a business division. Uh, it would, it would just. You know, one of the networks I watch a lot is Real America's Voice, mm-hmm. and um, I like it because what they did is they took these independent podcasters and video casters, and they built a network around the individual, like Steve Bannon's War Room. You know, he's just like, hey, if you want to carry it, here's you know, what I want to charge. Right, right. But he still runs it as a podcast. Um, you know, Charlie Kirk, same thing. All those people, they own their shows, and they've just got a distribution deal with it. So it's a more loosely, you know, unlike the Newsmax model, which is much like Fox, right? where you're all property exclusively of that network. I see, yeah. That and, is smart. Yeah, it's yeah. very smart. And now, see, your buddy Pat Campbell always kept his podcast as his own entity. And to be quite honestly, it somewhat undid the station because I started learning, you know, I could listen to 40 minutes of the podcast and I get everything from the one hour show minus the commercials, you know. (laughs) So it's a tricky deal. But this is the thing I I think... um, I think you're going to see people going to the medium, which they're hearing us now on a podcast, where you, it's on demand whenever it fits in your schedule. You can have it playing in the background. Right. You know, it's uh, my Bluetooth headset or you know what, what you what I think you really need. And and if if they were smart, um, there's another channel. I know Dish Network has it, and uh, what's his name is Como is on it. Chris Como has a show on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, you have people from Fox that used to be on Is Fox. It called the Nation. I, I News Nation. News Nation. News Nation. Yeah. And if someone was smart and they had a truly independent, uh, liberal conservative. Yeah, and this is Dan Dan Abrams started it. His, yeah, that, exactly. His father was with right. NBC forever, and so was he with MSNBC. And he wasn't quite woke enough, evidently, for them. Right. They let him go, right. and he started this. Okay. Now, I, didn't I know he's on there. I didn't know he, yeah. he had that background. No. But, he, yeah, can you imagine? I mean, just imagine, like, could you remember when Fox started, you had um, – uh, uh, with Hannity and Combs, mm-hmm. remember it, yeah. was, it was him and Combs, mm-hmm. and and then you would have uh, Greta was even not not necessarily a conservative. She mm-hmm. became now she's more so, yeah. but she's still pretty straight down the line. I mean, you know, you really don't know. She mm-hmm. gets really she's become more seems more conservative because she's so upset. 
she's really upset. This this um, blacks for Trump gentleman who's locked up. She I haven't seen anyone as upset as she is yeah. about his situation. Well, her forte is legal issues, right? So right. that was yeah. an easy. Yeah, thing. she's saying that. Yeah, yeah. But she's a but but if if News Nation, if Dan was smart. Mm-hmm. And he started bringing in maybe some young blood conservatives to start having a a, a network that had the both both, both well, points right. of view. That that could be the future, and and that's what he and he goes to third party assessments of what is the most objective of the media out there. And his News Nation right now is getting oh, really? the best score on that. Oh, okay. Um, by the way, previous to this, he was doing live PD, which Tulsa's PD was right. part of it. So. Oh, that was his. Yeah, he anchored oh. the New York oh, office okay. of that. Okay. And they had satellite, you know, all the EVD. Let's go down to see what Nashville police are doing. Yeah, because I know and, Tulsa was on there all the time. Right, yeah. yeah. And and that was one of his babies. You know, he's, his dad was a reporter. He grew up in it. He knows the industry. And, and he put this together. And for, you know, let's see what Cuomo does. He's offered a gift here to remake himself. Yeah. But, I mean, because they're not going to sacrifice that objectivity label for Cuomo's issues. Right. Cuomo, a lot of it was caught up by protecting his brother. As the governor. Yeah, and I think CNN producers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it was the CNN producers. They pushed too. him to that. But yeah. he also had the motivation of kissing up, making his brother look good. Right, you know? and, and I think his brother being out of office, because I think even uh, uh, Andrew has even come up with some statements where he's not agreeing with the party line. Right. So even so so there's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. It's interesting the Democrats we're we're editorializing now. Yeah. But I think I think even a lot of uh the Democrats are when they break free, they're really free. But you see it once they're out. Mm-hmm. But um but that's what's the difference between the Republicans and the Democrats and to the Democrats uh, what would you call it, uh, to their credit, which the Republicans don't have, which it, we used to think it was a, um, a credit to uh, have your independence, I guess. Mm-hmm. But in today's society, no longer, it, it, it's just not, not working. So, for example, to toe the party line right now is what's necessary. Yep. And and the Republicans are not, they, they don't have a party line. I mean, it's like everybody's out for themselves. And the Democrats, and, and the prime example, and I keep going back to this, is Fetterman. And what's his name um, uh, in uh, Atlanta running against Herschel? Um, Warlock. Yeah. Warnock. I like to call him Warlock. But anyway, um, it was 100% behind Fetterman, 100% behind Warnock, 100% behind the candidate in Arizona. You go to the Republican side. Man, I cannot tell you how many people were attacking uh, attacking Dr. Oz on the Republican side. Dr. Oz had more uh, battles trying to uh, fight the Republicans than he did the Democrats. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. I had people here locally that I was just shocked that I had to keep trying to tell why I was supporting Dr. Oz, and they were telling me all the reasons why you can't vote for Dr. Oz. And, And then the same thing with Herschel Walker, that Herschel Walker is not, uh, articulate enough. He's not this enough, mm-hmm. not that enough. And I said, "Oh, and Fetterman is right. Uh, Warnock is. I mean, my goodness, you, yeah. you you've got people that are totally inept. Yeah, and yeah. the Democrats, you not never heard one negative word. P. 
period, 100% lockstep, we're voting for our guy. Yeah, they will put in chaos agents. And chaos agents who are considered part of, let's say, well, I'm a fellow Republican, I'm attacking, you know, Oz, for instance. That can do more damage than 100 known Democrats attacking. Uh, You think of, look what all the federal agents that were embedded in the January 6th protest and how effective they were because they were wearing Trump hats Mm -hmm. and Trump, but they were federal agents. And keep in mind, Ray Epps is still a free man. Yeah. Okay. He said, we got to get in the building. You know, he literally helped tear down barricades and we haven't indicted him. But Trump said, go peacefully, go patriotically. Right, right. He's facing indictments. Right. You know, that tells you all you need to yeah. know. Oh, no, but no, they'll no. go to chaos agents. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. So, so, but what I'm getting at is still is it's our party eating itself. Yeah. And we've got these people and, and it goes back to where we began mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Richmond, north of Richmond. Mm-hmm. He was he was kind of right. Yeah, these guys that were in the thing last night, and maybe that's what he was talking about. That that these are the guys. Maybe he was mad at them because they were, <laughs> because these guys are all keeping Trump out of there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's a big Trump supporter, and maybe that's why he was going after these guys. Uh, when uh, what's his name? Uh, Richmond, north of Richmond. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Uh, Oliver Anthony. Oliver Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what he might, he's ticked off about. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that 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 you know, why are you even why are you even running? Yeah. Why aren't you behind Donald Trump? You know. Yeah. So, uh anyway, it's just uh the party can, you cannot win if you're going to be like this. Mm-hmm. You cannot. There's got to be some unity. Uh, I've been seeing this picture for a long time. Ever, well, actually, ever since Donald Trump was defeated in, in 2020. And that is the picture of Teddy Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. Teddy Roosevelt won in um, uh, 2000. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2000 19, 1900. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, only 100 years apart. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, he didn't win again. In fact, I guess he, he lost in, uh, or he didn't run in 20 years. Uh, Oh, no, it was oh two. It was oh two, and then oh six. But then he ran again in twelve. Yeah, he was disgusted. I think was it Taft? Yeah, and, Taft. And, and and because it was like this is not the Republican Party, right? And then know. he came back and ran as an independent. Started the Bull Moose Party mm-hmm. and ran as an independent in twenty twelve. Yes, yeah, split that, and then of course I gave the Democrat Woodrow Wilson. Right, Woodrow, which was a mistake. But uh, but anyway, uh, so. He reminds me. He reminds me of uh, of that uh, Woodrow. Will, I mean, uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. And uh, history repeats itself. Yep. And it could very likely be a repeat as well. The fact that he he may not win, and we may end up in World War Three, like we did end up in World War Two back then. Yep. I mean, this is serious stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not just saying this lightly. I don't want to see this, but this could be. But this is where we are and if we do not unite as a party. It's very, very mm-hmm. important that we get our stuff together as a Republican Party. Yeah. we've. I've got one uh, public service announcement I've got to put out. This Can I wrap? Can I add this to the show? Boy, you didn't really let me finish. It, oh, I thought you were done. I thought well, you, I, I mean, I mean, okay. I, 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 I'm sorry. You I jumped, jumped ship. right on I'm there. I'm sorry. You jumped right. It was like, <laughs> like. Yeah, I, I no. To your point, I think we, I think we, uh, we are in a crisis that this election uh, is our last hope. Yeah, I think people are seeing it. I know bad. we've been saying it, but no, I really, I really do. It's, it's getting that bad. It, it is, it is, well, and uh, Africa. Uh, it, there's a realignment internationally. Yeah. And this is, that's one reason, like you said, uh, the only way that we have of winning back some of the allies that we had and the allegiance we had besides Europe, because mm-hmm. Europe 
for the most part, is aligning itself with this one world government, yeah. Klaus Schwab and, and the gang. Yeah. Okay. But if we continue to give it to the Democrats, the socialists, let's just forget Democrat. They, they just trampled that word. The socialists. Mm -hmm. If we give it over to the socialist Democrats, then we've lost it. Mm -hmm. Russia, China, and uh, most of the world will, will be gone. Mm -hmm. The third world will become they. It will be Russia, China, and the third world yeah. against Europe and America, yeah. and we can't win any longer. We can't win. Any, I mean, I it's don't just see a warning. It. Serious nowhere warning. To go. No, nowhere to go. Okay. At that point, I see Revelation yeah. being fulfilled. <laughs> it might be our best hope. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna. Some early warnings are happening right now about what's going to happen in the next couple of months. We may be dealing with a game changer, much like February of 2020. And it's that... Um, 24, you mean? No. Oh, 2020. No. Yeah, we're talking oh. the next few weeks. Pension funds are heavily invested in the stock market. You know that. Right. Okay. Um. And of the stocks they're invested in, some of the stocks that have done very well over the last three years have been pharmaceuticals, largely because of the government contracts. The pharmaceuticals now have massive, massive inventories of the new COVID, COVID booster right, shots. Right. And they are seeing very little interest in people complying. Right. So we got to have a pandemic. By God, we got to have a pandemic right. because we got to have some way of getting people to get these shots so that we can justify these contracts so that we can pay our dividends to keep all these investment funds, uh, you know, uh, retirement, you know, all these pension funds. So there's a warning. A worldwide epidemic of mass platform psychosis is thought to be launching. That's what I call it. Not a healthy. This Babylon B. No, this is me. I'm the, oh, 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 I, I did okay. this all by myself, oh, okay. Eddie, and all I'm right, real proud right, of it. All right, Dave. <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. In the coming weeks, there will be a new epidemic of mass platform psychosis. Look it up. To avoid contracting this deadly condition, do the three things following. Simply think for yourself, one. Number two, avoid public shaming. Number three, Turn off infected sources of information. Be careful who you listen to. Because whoever you, you know, it's like, uh, remember the old imperial song, Old Man's Rebel? Because mm -hmm. the voice you hear is going to win the fight. Yeah. Uh, you know. So anyway, I'm saying get ready now. Because when oh, yeah. it hits, it's going to hit us like it did in March, February, March of 2020. And all of a sudden, they're going to scare, you know. I mean, if it was easy to snow Trump, it will be a lot easier to snow Biden. Well, yeah. It, well, I don't think it's a snowing. I think he may be involved in it. and uh, He'll do whatever Obama's tell him to do. Well, yeah, but even even to his own benefit, because uh, I see it happening, uh, shutting everything down again, mm -hmm. Uh Mass inoculations, masks, mm -hmm. quarantines. Mm -hmm. um, they're already, I mean, I've already seen the warnings out there that mm -hmm. they're talking about this new, more deadly mm -hmm. variant coming and, you know, nobody can go out and you've got to, uh, it, it's already supposedly they've caught, found it in Virginia or somewhere mm -hmm. and somewhere else, you know, and it's supposed to spread. So, no, I'm with you. And so... Um, the one thing about it, the Republican Party, the National Committee, is they're trying to stay ahead of it by getting us to get on board with early voting. Mm -hmm. Now, whether we'll still be able to keep up with with it, whether we'll be able to have as many ballots show up at the ballot box on election mm -hmm. day as, you know, what, what, what needs to happen, we need to be able to put people guards at the voting plate, have inspectors and guards to look under tables through them, make sure that there are no ballots anywhere in the facility before mm -hmm. voting 
and then guards to make sure no trucks show up and things like that. You no know. suitcases under the table. Right, that's exactly. <laughs> Nothing shows up at midnight, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden skew the, mm-hmm. the vote at 2 a.m. or yeah. whatever, you know. These are all the questions. I mean, come on. It's obvious. We saw yeah. this. This actually happened. Yeah. Okay. It's not a question. Yeah. That actually happened mm-hmm. to make everyone question mm-hmm. whether this was a legitimate election. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it, to me, it's more questionable than did Lee Harvey Oswald shoot Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's, uh, that's that. Anyway. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm going to say right now. It's a Dr. Seuss parody, okay? I will not wear it on my face. I will not wear it any place. I will not wear it to get in. I will not wear it on my chin. I will not wear it on my ear. I will not wear it out of fear. I will not wear your stupid mask. I will not wear it. Do not ask. Very good. Hey, okay. all right. That's a good one. You may quote him. That was not original. Oh, that one. I original? stole that from uh, Kenny Bob that, Tap out in the Panhandle. Okay, I, I <laughs> thought maybe you got that. You did that original. No, no. Hey, listen, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, we will talk to you, Lord willing, in the creek don't dry next week. Take care. Have a good week. <laughs>